Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto summons Kyuubi Chunin exams part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends and check out the description as well, let's start the video. Flashback. After the preliminaries. Uzumaki Naruto has been having a bad day. He passed the preliminaries of the Chiknin exams and went to the hospital to see if he could get Kakashi Sensei to train him. He refused saying he had to train Ichiha Sasuke, Naruto's teammate on Team 7, but he did get Naruto a teacher. Unfortunately it was the closet pervert Ibisu. Ibisu is a Takubetsu Jimin Naruto met after his first encounter with Saratobi Konohamaru, the Sandaim Hokage's grandson, when he was knocked out after an encounter with Naruto's h no Jutsu Harem Jutsu. He is a snooty and arrogant man dressed in the standard blue of a Jimin, wearing round sunglasses, and his hit I-8 forehead protector worn as a bandana. He also is one who sees Naruto as the fox brat. Naruto was furious and immediately refused his help. Ibisu, playing on Naruto's ego and negative feelings toward him, challenges Naruto. If Naruto was able to escape from him, he would resign as his teacher and convince Kakashi to train him. Taking the bait, Naruto accepts and quickly flees. After a village-wide chase involving multiple uses of the cage bunch and no jutsu shadow clone jutsu and a lot of frustration for Naruto, he finally gives in and accepts Ibisu as his teacher. After lunch at Ichiraku Raymond, a lecture on chakra control, and one empty wallet belonging to Ibisu later, the duo moves to the hot springs to practice water walking. Shortly after starting to practice, Naruto discovered a man peeping on the women's side of the hot spring. Ibisu, seeing this, demands he cease his actions and tries to attack him, ending with him knocked out at the hands of the man and a large toad. After his hermit dance and crazy introduction, the super pervert, now identified as Jiraiya the Gamma Senen Toad Sage, decides to take Naruto under his wing. We now find Naruto with Yureya at a waterfall near the outskirts of Konoha, trying to get the water walking exercise down. And flashback. Who's oh? Why can't I do this? An orange clad Naruto shouts in frustration after yet another failed attempt at water walking ending with him drenched. Grumbling at his failure, Naruto discards his jumpsuit, leaving him clad in a pair of green boxers patterned with little Raymond bowls patterned. What am I doing wrong? I'm channeling my chakra in a steady amount to my feet. Why won't it work already? Frustrated beyond belief Naruto decides to ask for help. Nah, Hiro Senen. Do you have any idea what I'm doing wrong? Rapidly turning around with an angry look damn Gaki. I told you not to call me Fa. Drilling off with a confused look, Jiraiya is looking intently at Naruto's seal with its new addition. Why is there a Gajimfkin, 5 element seal, over Naruto's Haki no Fkin Shiki, a trigram seal? No wonder he's having difficulties. An odd numbered seal over an even numbered seal would screw up anyone's chakra control. Walking over to Naruto who now has a rather exasperated look on his face Jiraiya asks, Gaki, why is there a Gajimfkin over your seal? The what? Oh. Is that what that damn snake Pito Orochimaru did after he jabbed me in the stomach? He attacked us during the second stage in the forest of death. Orochi team, I should have known. I knew he placed his ten no and cursed seal of heaven on the Ichiha because Saratobi sensei asked me to look at the Fjomin evil sealing method Kakashi placed to contain it. However, he didn't tell me that Naruto had a seal as well. Why didn't he say anything? Naruto, didn't you tell anyone you had that seal placed on you? With a rather sheepish look on his face Naruto said, eh. I forgot to. After jumping up from face faulting onto the ground, Jiraiya slapped Naruto on the back of the head and exclaimed, you dumb gaki. How could you forget to say anything? Didn't you notice how your chakra control was shot after that? What do you mean my chakra control was shot? I thought it just got rid of Kikbi's chakra which I was using at the time. Is this why I can't do the water walking? Can you get rid of it? But the flabbergasted look on his face Jiraiya asked. Did you say Kikbi's chakra? You can wield it. Since when? Yeah, I can, ever since I went on the mission to wave country. Kakashi sensei told me what happened afterward because my memory is kinda fuzzy from there. He also told me how I went berserk. So, I started training myself and using it so I didn't go crazy every time I drew on it after we got back to the village. I didn't get very far though. I could only use so much before it got real hazy and I started losing myself to bloodlust. He had a fearful look on his face now. I didn't want that to happen when I was in the village. I'm treated bad enough by the village already. Between the civilian council making my life hell by allowing the vendors to throw me out of their shops and overcharge me for rotten food and poor quality equipment, my apartment constantly being broken into and my things broken, as well as the threatening messages like die demon painted on my walls and the glares and curses I get from the villagers, things are bad enough. I'm just lucky the mobs that beat me half to death stopped after I became a ninja. I was tired of getting poison in my IVs at the hospital. This changes everything. 
I had planned on only giving him some basic training and drawing on the kickbee and letting him sign the toad contract. However, if he is already using its chakra I'm going to have to move up my plans for him, especially since I've heard from my spy network that the Akatsuki are becoming more active. It took a moment for the rest of Naruto's statement to register, but when it did he was furious, a massive killer intent spread all across the clearing. Mentally raving in his head with a murderous look on his face, those blasted villagers. How dare they do this to my godson. Saratobi sensei lied to me. He said Naruto was doing fine. What the hell was he saying? This is not fine at all, this is terrible. Completely ignoring Naruto's nervous look at feeling the killer intent, he starts pacing back and forth furiously. Damn them. Why would they do this? Naruto is a hero. Every day he protects the village by being the jailer of Kikbi. Those ignorant bastards are blinded by their hatred of the beast, and they take it out on Naruto just for being the container. I bet they don't even see Naruto as a human. They probably only see the Kikbi. Pillar intent rising by the second he walks over to the nearest tree and throws Rasengan after Rasengan at it in a rage. Turning to Naruto with murder still burning in his eyes, he instantly freezes when he notices Naruto is curled up on the ground in a fetal position, fearfully staring out at nothing with tears welling in his eyes. Flashbacks of the beatings he suffered running through his mind, triggered by the large amount of killer intent Jureya was exuding. Those eyes. Such eyes full of pain and fear. No child should have such eyes. What did they do to you Naruto? I'm so sorry I wasn't there. I'm so sorry Minato, Kishina. I've failed your son. Face now taking on a determined look, Jiraiya comes to a decision. This stops now. Screw the council and their decision, I'm taking Naruto as my apprentice and leaving with him after the exams. I'm one of the Densetsu no Sanin, legendary three ninja. I can do it and they can't stop me. I'm going to make him so strong for the finals and show them all the mistakes they made. I'm going to have to talk to Suratobi sensei after we are done here. Taking deep breaths to calm himself, his face takes on the softest and most caring expression he can muster. He slowly walks over to Naruto so as not to scare him any more than he already is. Kneeling and gently encircling Naruto in his arms, he can feel how Naruto goes completely rigid. It's okay Naruto. I'm so sorry about that. When you told me what happened, I forgot myself for a moment there. Please calm down. I won't hurt you. I won't let anyone else hurt you anymore either. I will protect you from them. That is a promise. Just let it all out, I'm here and I'm not going anywhere. Naruto tentatively returns Jiraiya's hug, and when nothing else happens, he buries his face in Jiraiya's chest and cries. Sadness flowing out of him in waves, he weeps for his life and for all the pain, suffering, loneliness, and solitude. Gripping Jiraiya like he is his very link to life, Naruto reveals his pain to the world. The mask of happiness that he wore all his life is shattered. All the agony that he feels deep in his very soul, he cries out to the heavens in his anguish. Two hours later. Eventually Naruto runs out of energy and falls asleep in Jiraiya's arms. Picking him up bridal style with tears running down his own face and feeling pain in his heart, Jiraiya leaps away to take Naruto home so he can go and think for a bit. After arriving back at the village, he decides to walk in order to get a feel of the villagers on his way to Naruto's apartment. While walking through the village, he can see the glares directed at Naruto and the muttering and pointing at Jiraiya. Channeling some chakra to his ears in order to hear what the villagers are saying, he is immediately disgusted by some of the things he hears. That's Jiraiya-sama. What is he doing with the demon brat in his arms? The brat's eyes are closed. Do you think he's dead? Good riddance if he is. Yandame sama was Jiraiya-sama's student, maybe he is going to finish his student's job and get rid of the demon. Starting to glare at the villagers, the whispers take a more furious pace. Why is Jiraiya-sama glaring at us? He should be happy the demon is hurt. I bet the blasted demon is corrupting the great Jiraiya-sama like he did with Hokage-sama. He should get rid of the brat before its taint spreads to him. Shaking slightly in his anger, he decides to take to the rooftops. If he stayed any longer he might do something that would either put himself or Naruto in danger. Channeling chakra through his legs to move fast, he makes a beeline to Naruto's apartment. Entering the slums near the outskirts of the village he comes upon Naruto's apartment. However, upon arriving he notices it completely trashed with threatening messages spread all over the walls. His anger rises the more he looks at it. Unconsciously, he starts leaking a small amount of killer intent, causing Naruto to whimper in his sleep. Immediately realizing what was happening he pushes his anger away and grips Naruto a little tight in his embrace. This is what he goes through every day. How can you still be sane Naruto? There is no way he will be safe here. But, I can't take him with me to see Siratobi sensei because of all that would be discussed. I would not dare leave Naruto alone at my hotel either. From those whispers I bet rumors would be spread all over the village in minutes, he might get attacked if I leave him in my hotel room. Where can I take him? He thought on the issue for several minutes before coming to a solution. 
Using the Shunshin no Jutsu body flicker technique, he leaves in a cloud of smoke to his hotel. Placing him on the bed he puts him in a Jinjutsu for a dreamless sleep. After this, he goes into the living room he channels a large amount of chakra and performs the hand signs for the Kuchius no Jutsu, summoning Jutsu, and summons Shima, one of the elder toad sages of Mount Mamboku. When the smoke clears a small yellow and purple toad with curly purple hair holding a rolling pin appears. Hiraya chan what are you doing summoning me here? I was right in the middle of making dinner. Bowing deeply at the waist Hiraya says in a pleading voice, I'm sorry Shima-sama, but I have a very important request to make of you. Will you please listen? Hopping onto the coffee table Shima says, this sounds serious Yureya chan Is something wrong? Sitting on the floor so Shima can look Yureya in the eye, he says with utmost seriousness. It's about my godson Naruto. Things have gone horribly wrong. Over the next hour he then proceeds to tell Shima all that has happened today with Naruto, all that Naruto told him, what he plans to do with Naruto, his trip in the village, and the whispers and rumors he suspected were flying around. And that is all that's happened. Please take Naruto with you back to Mount Mamboku while I go and get Naruto's situation sorted. I don't trust the villagers to not try something when he is weak like this. I put him in a sleeping jutsu and I want him to stay that way for now. He revealed a lot of pain today and it left him exhausted. Throughout Jiraiya's tale, Shima's face reflected first surprise, then anger and finally sadness and determination. Nodding her head in agreement with Jiraiya's reasons, the poor child has seen so much suffering at such a young age. I agree with you about the villagers. Your reasons are valid, and even though he has not signed the toad contract you plan on having him do it, so it won't be too much of a problem to take him back with me. I will do it. Prostrating himself in front of her, he repeatedly bows in gratitude, thank you Shima-sama. I won't be long. I'll come back for him tomorrow. Don't bow to me like that, Jureya-chan. It's alright. Now let's go see the boy. Hopping onto his shoulder Shima and Jureya both head back to the bedroom. Seeing him sleeping so peacefully Shima remarks, he looks so peaceful. It's hard to believe all that he has suffered. Sighing, she hops off Yureya's shoulder and onto the bed. At this sort of Jureya chan I don't want to know what, touching Naruto's shoulder, Shima and Naruto disappear in a puff of smoke. After leaving, Jureya sits on the bed and sighs. I think all of this has happened. I never would have guessed things got this bad. I better go talk to Saratobi sensei Fifteen minutes later, Hokage's office. Saratobi Hiruzen, the Purifus Professor, the Shinobi no Kami God of Shinobi, the Sandame Hokage, had a bad feeling in the pits of his stomach. Things just seemed to be going wrong for him lately, and he felt that things were only going to get worse. Pushing back from his desk full of a mountain of unfinished paperwork, he groaned as he stood up with his old joints popping. Walking out on the balcony and looking over his village, his gaze eventually fell towards the Hokage monument, more specifically, the Yandame's head. Staring for a few minutes he sighed in sadness. I wish you were still here, my friend, sitting in this office and wearing this hat instead of me. I'm getting old, my friend. When I was reinstated after your sacrifice, I never expected things to go so badly. This village is being corrupted. The village council is taking more and more power away from me. Their greed and hatred are ruling them. Your son is not treated as the hero he is. The shinobi side is mostly on his side, but the civilian side is always making trouble. At every meeting with the council, they try to make Naruto's life miserable. Thinking back on the last council meeting, things were even worse than usual. Flashback, council meeting. Okajama, the demon brat is growing too powerful. He passed the preliminaries and is moving on to the finals against Hai Uganiji. He is showing power that he should not have. The demon is influencing him. One of the civilian council members shouted. There is no way the brat should be that strong. The demon is definitely taking over. We need to stop it before it grows too powerful and destroys the village. It's even corrupting his classmates with its demonic powers. Why else would the honorable clan heirs and heiresses be with him? It should be banished Hokage-sama. We must be rid of its taint on the village. No. He should be executed. Drop him from the ninja program. Banishment. This went on for hours. The shinobi side could not even get in a word. The elders and Danzo were pushing for Naruto to be made a weapon to be controlled. With a growing headache, the Hokage slammed his fist on the table, releases a large amount of killing intent at the civilian council, and shouts enough. Naruto is a human boy. Not a demon. There will be no killing, banishing, or dropping him from the ninja program. He is growing strong because he trains day and night, not because of his burden influencing him, you bakas. The crippled old warhawk Danzo at this point smirked and remarked, and what do you have to say about the boy's training and controlling the demon's power Hiruzen? Were you going to tell us about that? Hiruzen inwardly cursed Danzo's knowledge about that because he knew he was going to try to use that to his advantage. 
The civilian side started muttering at that, however, before things could get out of hand again, Danzo raised his hand to halt the tirade. I'm sure you all think this is a bad thing and it can be. But, right now it is not. If we can get him under control, he would become Kanoha's greatest weapon. Our nation's superiority would be cemented with the Kikbi's power at our side. Our village would get all the mission requests, thus, bringing in more money. Minor countries wouldn't dare go against us and scramble over each other to gain our favor which will open up trade routes and more for merchants and other wealth to make its way to the village. Appealing to the greed of the council, the civilians started nodding in agreement and pretty soon they were shouting how he should be given to Danzo as a weapon. And flashback. After the shouting died down it was eventually put to a vote, however, both sides were completely tied. The civilians all voted yes, as well as Danzo. The two elders, who only had one vote and it had to be unanimous or they did not count, voted yes. The shinobi all voted no, with the Hokage using his right of two votes for no, thus deadlocking the issue and causing it to be discarded. Walking back into the office to stare at the portraits of the previous Hokages, his eyes fell on the Yandame. I can't protect him for much longer, old friend. Today was the closest they ever got to ruining Naruto's life forever. Eventually one of the shinobi will side with the civilians and Naruto's fate will be sealed. His musing was interrupted by the arrival of Jiraiya coming in the window. Sensei. We have to talk. If he was surprised due to the icy tone of Jiraiya's voice, he was very surprised to notice how serious Jiraiya looked right now. Waving Jiraiya into his office he sat down at his desk with his elbows resting on the top, with his hands clasped in front of his face. Is something wrong, Jiraiya-kun? What has happened? Sitting down across from the sandame, Jiraiya says, it's Naruto. That bad feeling growing he sends out the Anbu in his office and activates the privacy seals. He then asks in a worried voice, what has happened? Is Naruto-kun okay? Did he get hurt? Face contorting in anger he spat out, no, he's not okay. He's almost as far from okay as you can get. Very concerned now the Sande masks, what do you mean? Ureya then proceeds to tell him everything about the events of today, starting from when he met Naruto to having him taken to Mount Momboku. All matter of emotions fly across the Sandame's face as the story goes on and finally settles on deep sadness and weary resignation. Don't you see, Sensei? Things are horrible. If I don't do something things will only get worse. Sighing deeply, I'm afraid things are much worse than you know Jiraiya kun now it's the Sandame's turn to tell what happened during the council meeting he had with Yureya's anger rising as the story progressed until finally he exploded. Filler intent higher than the Sandame had felt in years, exploded from Jureya and washed over the village, causing concern among the shinobi and civilians to panic when the angry voice of the Gamma Senin rang out. How dare they do that? That damn council. And Danzo. When I get my hands on him I'll. The voice cut off abruptly when the Sandame activated the silencing seals in his office. Inside the office however, the ranting went on getting more and more graphic in describing how Jiraiya was going to murder the council. Eventually his anger ran out and gave way once more to sadness, and he collapsed in the chair. Jiraiya kun as much as I might agree with you there is nothing I can do. The council has gained too much power. Both men lapse into silence thinking on how they can try to fix this. Eventually Jiraiya came up with an idea. I can take Naruto as my apprentice. What will that do Jiraiya? I thought you already planned on doing that. That's not what I was talking about, Sensei. I mean I will take Naruto as my full-time apprentice and name him as my successor. Doing so will make me his guardian, grant him some privileges like the sand and traveling rights that will allow him to come and go as he pleases with no repercussions and provide him political protection when it is publicly announced. Plus, the council can't stop it because of my rights as a Sanin. A Sanin answers only to the Hokage, not the greedy bastards on the council. The Sandame thought it over thoroughly, lighting up his pipe while weighing the pros and cons of the decision, before finally agreeing. It seems like that is our only choice. However, do you understand the repercussions this will have? Publicly acknowledging this will make Naruto many enemies both in and out of the village. The council is going to be furious, they will try anything to stop Naruto from leaving. They might even go after those he cares about. Gureya was nodding throughout this then said, I will talk with Naruto later, find out who it is that he cares for, and then find a way to discreetly warn them. They will not be caught in the crossfire of this without knowing what could happen. That is a good idea Jiraiya. However, there is one thing wrong here. Naruto-kun's classmates do not know about his tenant. You can be sure those who go after them will try to use that to their advantage. I thought of that and I have an idea, but you aren't going to like it. We may not have a choice. What are you thinking? I want you to remove the law that prevents the older generation from talking about Naruto's burden. The Sandame almost dropped his pipe in shock. Jiraiya are you insane? That is the only thing allowing Naruto a peaceful life in the village. 
If I do this, the older generation will poison the younger with lies and turn the rest of the village against him. I know that, but I have a plan to help prevent some of that. Besides Naruto does not have a peaceful life in the village anyway. I'll bet I haven't heard even half of what has happened with Naruto growing up and what I have makes me want to beat the villagers to a pulp. Wearily, the Sandame says, you're right. I've tried my best over the years to help him, but I'm blocked at every turn. What is your plan? I won't be able to prevent everybody from hating him, but I can at least try to save his friends. I know there is another Jinch Cricky in the finals. I want you to talk to Naruto's classmate Senesis under the guise of advice about Jinch Cricky due to one being in the finals. You will hint to them that something big is going down soon and that Naruto's burden will soon become public knowledge. You will talk about how they are treated, what their life is like, the beatings, the glares, prejudice, hatred, the power they can wield, enough to paint a picture about how a Jinch Cricky is only a container, not what they contain. You will then instruct them to repeat what you have said to their students. This gives them a valid reason to talk about Jinch Cricky if confronted about it, because the council was warned about Gara being one of the containers. Therefore, they will have to accept the reason even if they don't believe it. Realization dawned. So when Naruto being a Jinch Cricky is public knowledge, they will already have a clear opinion free of lies on the subject. Plus, knowing what Naruto's life was like due to his burden will prevent them from being swayed by the lies they might be told, because the trust in the older generation will be shaken when the children realize what Naruto had to go through because of them, causing them to not believe the lies and side with Naruto. In turn, this will keep Naruto happy because he knows at least part of the village accepts him for his burden. Both men grinning now, Jiraiya-kun, that's brilliant. That would work very well. You know me, Sensei, always getting out of tight spots. What are you going to do in the meantime? I'm going to train Naruto. I'm going to teach him as much as I can in the month period so that when the finals come around the village will be blown away. I also plan to take him away from the village after the finals are over and he is promoted. That reminds me, I need Naruto's inheritance because I plan to inform Naruto about his mother during the break and then his father after we leave. Keeping him in the dark when he was desperate for one bright spot in his life was the wrong thing to do. Nodding in agreement, the Sandame stands up and walks over to the Yandame's portrait. Pulling it away from the wall he reveals a seal. Biting his thumb and swiping it over the seal, it blows slightly and fades away, revealing a safe hidden in the wall. Motioning Jiraiya over who bites his thumb and swipes it over the safe causing it to unlock and open, revealing two large scrolls, one wrapped in a red ribbon with the Yuzumaki clan symbol on it and the other wrapped in a yellow ribbon with the Namika's clan symbol. The Sandame takes them and gives them to Jiraiya with some parting words, keep him safe Jiraiya-kun. I care about that boy like he was my own grandson. Help him find his will of fire. Also, ask him to forgive an old man for his mistakes. Accepting them, Jiraiya replies, I will, Sensei, and don't worry. He will forgive you. You're his Jiji after all. Watching Jiraiya leap out the window Sirotobi sighs. I hope he does Jiraiya. But after he finds out all that I've hidden from him he may never forgive me. The next day, at the waterfall. Fuchiya Snow Jutsu, summoning Jutsu. A puff of smoke appeared and a small messenger toad appeared in front of Jiraiya. Please tell Shima-sama to return Naruto please. The toad nodded and disappeared in a puff of smoke. First things first I'm going to have to talk to Naruto. Explain to him what is happening and what I'm planning. Hopefully he will go along with it. Another puff of smoke signaled the arrival of Shima with Naruto. Hello, Jiraiya-chan, was heard as the smoke cleared. Bowing in respect Jiraiya addressed the elder toad sage, hello, Shima-sama. Was there any trouble with Naruto back at the mountain? Shima sighs and says sadly, not much, but let's just say the toads are not very happy with Konoha right now. Resting Naruto against a nearby rock, Jiraiya responds, yes, I figured they would not be. What happened? Yes. Well you see. Flashback. Yesterday, Mount Momboku. A puff of smoke signaled the arrival of elder Shima and Naruto to Mombakizen, the home of the toad clan. Appearing in the bedroom of the small cottage home, Shima laid Naruto down on the bed and tucked him in. Entering the room shortly after was a small green toad with balding gray hair visible. This toad was Fukasaku, husband of Shima and the other elder toad sage. Hey, Ma, who is this? When you were summoned earlier we had no idea what was happening. Some of the toads were getting worried. Ah, pa. Don't startle me like that you old goat. This is young Naruto Uzumaki. I brought him here as a favor for Jiraiya. Fukasaku's eyebrow shot straight up when he heard the name. Surprised, he asks, Minato's tadpole. Why did Jiraiya have him brought here? I can sense he has not signed the toad contract. You know that anyone who hasn't should not be here. I know, pa, I know. I can assure you Jiraiya had valid reasons for him being here. Things have gone very bad for Naruto and Konoha. Please assemble the clan in 30 minutes because they all need to hear this. 
it could affect our future partnership with Konoha. A bewildered look crossed Fukasaku's face as he nodded and then left, no doubt wondering what could possibly happen to cause this. As he left, Shima's face crumpled in sadness as he stared at the child sleeping peacefully. With tears running down her face she caressed his face and said in a soothing tone, don't worry, young tadpole. You are safe here. 30 minutes later. The toads gathered in the clearing are confused. A little while ago they were all asked to assemble here to discuss something that could affect their relationship with Konoha. In the front group were three very large toads. A red toad with a scar over his left eye wearing a blue jacket and tanto with a pipe in his mouth, a purple toad dressed in a battle kimono and mesh wielding a Sakazuki-like shield and sasamata, and an aquamarine toad wearing an orange sash around his stomach and wielding two huge katanas. These toads were Gamma Bunta, Gamma Kin and Gamma Hero. The one with the katanas asked, Elders, what is going on? Why have you assembled us? Patience, Hero. Ma will explain what's happening in a minute. The purple toad then said. I may be ungraceful, but may I assume that this has to do with the young tadpole currently sleeping in your cottage, Elder Shima. The rest of those gathered were now listening to the conversation with interest. Nodding, you would be correct Gamakin. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is that Minato's son, the Jinch Kriki? Yes, Bunta, it is. Turning to address everyone, Shima then starts to speak. Everyone listen to me. Something terrible has happened in Kanoha. You all remember young Minato, Jiraiya-chan's first apprentice. You all know how he died facing the Kikbi no Kitsune 13 years ago by sealing it into his child. His last wish was that his son be treated as a hero. Thanks to Jiraiya who encountered young Naruto, he learned the truth and what a terrible tragic truth it was. Flashback end. I told them all that you told me and needless to say they were furious. We had to use Gamma Hero and Gammakin to restrain Bunta from going to the portal to this world and attacking the village in a rage. He loved Minato like he was his own tadpole. To hear how his only son and heir was treated here caused him to fly into a rage. He's now drinking himself into a stupor to drown his sorrow away and refuses to be summoned until this is fixed. The rest of the clan is of similar attitudes. I'd recommend not summoning them unless it is an absolute emergency. Gurei aside in dejection. I understand, Shima-sama. I will respect their wishes. It's probably for the best, Jiraiya chan Did you discuss what will happen with young Naruto with your sensei? Looking determined now, yes we did. We've got a plan to help protect him from now on and give him some happiness in his life. Jiraiya then informs Shima of what he and the Hokage planned. His taking Naruto as his full-time apprentice and guardian, his plan to have the Hokage talk to the sensei of Naruto's classmates who will then talk to their students, his plan for training for the finals, his inheritance, and then leaving after the exams are done. Nodding in agreement while chuckling, you could always get out of the stickiest situations Jiraiya-chan. It's brilliant. Smugly, it's not too bad if I say so myself. Thank you for taking care of Naruto Shima-sama. I am in your debt. Think nothing of it, Jiraiya-chan. Jana. I suppose I better wake him up and get started. Kneeling in front of him, he taps Naruto's forehead and mutters release. Naruto starts stirring and opens his eyes, a dead look in them. Upon seeing Jiraiya he groggily Naruto asks, Hiro Senen was yesterday a dream? Did all that happen? Kneeling down to look Naruto in the eye, no, it wasn't a dream, and yes, all of that happened. Looking cautiously hopeful, and what you said. Did you mean it? Giving Naruto the most solemn and serious look he could muster, yes, Naruto, it is all true. Light returns to Naruto's eyes and giving Jiraiya a smile, not the fake one to mask his pain, but a true genuine smile that brightens the room. So what is going to happen to me now? Are we still training? Yes, we are but first let me tell you what happened after you fell asleep. Then we can get started. Mood rising by the minute as Jiraiya gives a recap of all that has happened and what he plans to do, Naruto is overjoyed by the end of it all. Already knowing the answer but needing to get all the formalities out of the way, so, Naruto, will you accept? Jumping to his feet and bowing deeply at the waist, Naruto says with utmost respect and adoration in his voice, I have only known you for one day, and already you have done more for me than anybody ever has in my life. I am honored by your decision to train me as your successor and I humbly accept. Thank you so much, Jiraiya-sama. Clapping his hands together and returning the bow, no, Naruto, the honor is mine. I look forward to teaching you to the best of my abilities. Both standing up now Jiraiya starts cracking his knuckles and says, all right, Naruto, it's time to get started. I plan on training you into the ground every day until the finals. We need you to get as strong as possible, as fast as possible. I've got a training schedule in mind for you. However, it will be grueling. Expect to go to sleep every night with chakra exhaustion because that is how hard I'm going to work you. There is no turning back now because certain events have been set in motion that will require you to be strong enough. Yosh. I am ready to get this done. Let's do it. 
suddenly remembering the Gajamfkin, Jureya halts Naruto celebrating. Wait, Naruto, I almost forgot about the seal Orochimaru gave you. Come here and lift up your shirt so I can remove it. Naruto does as told and raises his shirt. Fingertips glowing blue Jureya slams his hand into Naruto's stomach with a cry of Gajamfkin Kai. Five element seal release, and then it all goes dark. Brip. 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 Naruto wakes up in what appears to be a sewer. A dark labyrinth filled with ankle-deep water and pipes with some glowing red and others blue. What happened? Did Iro Sen and knock me out or something when he removed the seal? Where the heck am I? Hearing a groaning near him, he looks over and sees Jureya waking up and looking around much like Naruto did. Now certain this isn't a dream because he's here Naruto asks, hey Iro Sen and what happened? Where are we? I'm not sure Naruto. One second I'm removing that seal and the next we are here. The crimson glow lights up one of the tunnels when a deep voice, full of immense power, rang out. We are in your mindscape kit. I brought you both here. Now come. We must speak. The sheer aura exuded demanded respect. Naruto and Jiraiya both had an idea of what was happening. Tentatively Naruto asks, na. Hiro Senen. Is that what I think it is? It is. That is the voice of Kai Ubi. We must be inside of your seal Naruto. A deep chuckling rang out inside the chamber, and the light grows stronger. Yes human, you are correct. Now bring yourself and my jailer into the ceiling chamber. I demand your presence here. There is much we must discuss. This is gonna be interesting. I didn't know I could talk to him. That's pretty cool. Shrugging, Naruto makes his way down the tunnel to the chamber with Yureya following. Eventually, they come into an open room with a massive set of wrought iron gates, locked together by a paper with a kanji for seal imprinted on it. Coming near the gates, the massive side of the great fox with nine tails looming over Naruto and Jureya. The amount of power they could feel emanating from the great kitsune was massive. They could not help but be a little nervous. Welcome humans to my chamber. As you may have guessed, I am the greatest of the biju, the Kaiubi no kitsune, head of the kitsune clan. And you, young one, are my jailer. Naruto decided to show respect to the great beast and bowed, yes, Kaiubi, I am your jailer. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. Deciding to forego his hermit dance so as not to piss off the giant demon in front of him, Jiraiya settled for a simple bow. Kaiubi, my name is Jiraiya, I am the Toad Sage and one of the Densetsu no Sanin. I am the one who taught your sealer, the Yandame Hokage. I am wondering why I'm here though. Naruto, I can understand seeing as he is your jailer, but why bring me here? The thank you. Utterly flabbergasted that the most powerful being on the planet was thanking him, all he could ask was, why what did I do? I've been affected by the remnants of a Manjekyo Jinjutsu during my time as the Kit's jailer. The Jinjutsu was disrupted when another seal was placed over the seal here. However before I could regain my senses I got completely sealed away by the one who reeks of snakes. You, when you released that seal also managed to break the hold the Manjekyo held over me. For the first time in 13 years I am myself again and for that I thank you. During this time Naruto is pondering something from Kaiubi's explanation. You've been under a Jinjutsu for 13 years. Does that mean you were being controlled when you attacked Konoha? Your suspicions are correct Kit. Yes, I was controlled against my will when I attacked your village. I may be a greater demon full of anger, but I am the guardian of the land of fire as appointed by my creator, not its destroyer. So that means you never meant to attack the village. All of those people in my village hate you because you attacked, but you were forced to do it and you're innocent. Why would nobody realize this? Greatly surprised his jailer does not seem to hold a grudge, but not showing it, Kaiubi shrugs and answers. Humans are ignorant in things they don't understand. Their intelligence is blinded by fear and hatred of me. Unfortunately, from what I've seen from your memories, they find an out for it all by targeting you, and for that I'm sorry. Wait a sec. How did you gain access to my memories you only just met me? Gurea is also interested in this and turns for an answer. Did you not think drawing on my power would not have side effects? Every time you drew on my power some of the haze from the Jinjutsu faded showing me your memories. I've seen all you've experienced in your life from the lowest of the low, when you were beaten half to death all the way up to your feelings for the dark-haired ice woman that you tried to hide from her. Dureya unfortunately chose now to let his super pervert attitude into the light. With a rather lecherous grin on his face, now Gaki. What is this I hear? You have a girlfriend. Giggle giggle giggle. Turning red and stammering slightly, it's not like that you big perv. I may like her, but there was no way we could be together. Our paths went different ways. Besides, Haku is none of your business. Enough of your bickering. We have much to decide. So I'll cut straight to the point. I want to make a deal with the kit. Okay that does not sound too bad. What kind of deal Kaiubi? That involves the seal keeping me in prison here. I want. Please forgive the interruption Kaiubi, but we can't free you, it would kill. Silence. 
I am aware of the cost of my freedom from this place, and don't you dare think I would try to free myself if it would harm the kid. Our souls are linked by the seal through Shinigami-sama. If the kid were to die I would as well. I have no intention of that. Do not interrupt me again. I may be jailed, but I am a biju and I deserve respect. Gurei is sweating profusely in his nervousness, bows, of course Kayubi-sama. Please forgive my disrespect. Naruto, having enough of the waiting, hey. I thought we were discussing a deal with me and the Kaiubi, so let's get back to business shall we? I've got training to get done and I can't spend all my time here. My jailer is correct. Now as I was saying before I was interrupted I want to make a deal that involves the seal that binds you to me. First things first, I want access to your senses. As well as a mental link between you and me so we may communicate outside of the mindscape. In return I will fix your body. Slightly concerned, Naruto asks what do you mean fix my body? What is wrong with it? Your growth has been stunted due to malnourishment and the seal's interference that happened while isolating me from you. What should have happened was my chakra would be leaked out at a small, but steady, rate as you grew, but it never did. Why I don't know, but it is not important as it can be fixed. Back to my chakra tough, it would strengthen you bones and muscles, making them much stronger than they are, and much harder to tear or break. Your hide is one thing, unfortunately, not caused by me. But rather eating only Raymond for meals. Your nutrition should be balanced out, but it is not, which is why you are small in stature compared to the rest of the generation your age. You have two choices here. You can fix it yourself by eating more meals, and you will gradually gain your correct stature, or I can use my chakra to enhance it to get it done quickly. There will be some small repercussions if you take this option, but it is not that big of a change. Put simply, you are a 13-year-old stuck in a 9-year-old body. I will alter your body to reflect your correct age and appearance if you weren't malnourished, and the seal worked correctly. Contemplating his options, Naruto says, Iro Senen says we don't have much time. But I need to know what would happen if I took the second option. I'm not going to grow any tails or fox ears will I? Nothing that drastic, no. These changes will be small. Your eyes will become slanted slightly, and your pupils will turn to slit somewhat while your blue will remain, it will become deeper. Your face will become slightly more vulpine. Your canines will become small fangs, and finally your whisker marks will darken slightly. Overall you will gain a few fox-like features that will make you look similar to the ones you call in Yuzukas. These aren't just cosmetic changes though, your senses will be enhanced greatly. Your eyesight will be superior and will be granted night vision. Your nose will be able to smell the enemy from a mile away. Your hearing will be sharper as well, being able to discern sounds that would normally require chakra being channeled to your ears. I think it sounds okay, I could handle that. What do you think Hiro Senen? Ureya's face takes on a contemplating look. The changes are small but still noticeable. But it's my fault anyway that he is like this because I tightened the seal after Naruto's birth to cut him completely from the chakra. This might cause even more trouble with the villagers. But we do need to get this done quick. We are leaving this soon anyway, so it should not be too much of a problem. He might as well. I think you should take the deal Naruto. Nodding, okay Kaiubi. I accept the deal. Is there anything else? Giving a fox-like grin, there is something else. I know of the pervert's plan to train you. I will be doing so as well. I will not tolerate a weak container. You should know being my jailer grants you powers that until now have been locked away. However, I will not simply give them to you. No, I want something in return. Naruto looks ecstatic at the prospect of special powers, however Jiraiya looks wary. Wanting more information he asks, what are the powers and what do you want in return? Looking towards Jiraiya the fox responds, you are suspicious of me. That is good. I am a fox and we are cunning that way. However I will enlighten you. The kid being my jailer grants him two abilities. The ability to control Kitsune Bai or Fox Fire and allowing him to perform Kitsune illusions. These abilities are unique to my clan. The first will allow you to control our fire. It is blue in color and much stronger than normal fire. This will be useful to you because of your primary affinity, which is wind. Your second affinity for fire, which comes from me, will be enhanced to allow the use of fox fire. Kitsune illusions are a super-powered form of Jinjutsu. Most of my clan is unable to use normal Jinjutsu, and that defect was passed to you upon my ceiling. Kitsune illusions are illusions that affect the reality around the user. You solid henge transformation is one of the most basic abilities. Completely surprised by this information Naruto asks, wait, my henge is not supposed to be solid. I thought it was. Sighing again it is godsend stupidity, no Naruto the henge is an ear rank jutsu that only puts an illusion around the user to make it appear that the caster has changed. If it is touched it would waver or dissipate because it has no substance. To be able to pull off a solid transformation is a huge boon for infiltration missions. We will have to work on it later. 
Turning back towards Kaiubi, Jiraiya asks, you said you wanted something in return for these abilities. What is it you want? I have a way to grant me temporary freedom from this blasted seal. It will be controlled by the kit, and I will not be able to come and go as I please, but it is enough to get me out of the damnable sower, and I would like to see the outside world again. Once again flabbergasted because he thought the seal prevented the Kaiubi's escape he asks, how? A special summoning contract between the kit and myself. It would make myself kit's familiar or personal summon, while not interfering with any other normal summoning contract he would sign. He can summon me for battle or for training. There are many possibilities here. But I cannot train these abilities in the mindscape, so in order to train you in them, this must be done. Naruto is beaming now and says, so I could let you out of here and breathe the outside world again, that is awesome. It did not seem right that you were forced to be sealed for something that wasn't your fault. So long as you promise not to attack the village if I summon you, I don't see a problem. This is great. Gureya was worried but resigned. I have a feeling it's not that simple Naruto. But there are simply too many benefits for this to ignore. We will take care of the contract later, right now I am going to fix your body. There will be a large spike in my chakra that will likely be sensed in your village. This is unavoidable. But it can serve as an intimidation for those foolish villagers, showing them that all their efforts to make the kid weak were in vain. He will return to the village and they see his power. They will tremble in fear and awe, enlightening them to their mistake. A smug grin on Naruto's face and a worried look from Jiraiya, they both faded from the mindscape. Back in the clearing by the waterfall, Naruto and Jiraiya begin to stir. Waking up and shakily standing on slightly trembling legs, Jiraiya simply states, well, that was a hell of an experience. Also trembling slightly, Naruto comments, well it was not that bad. We sure found out a lot of stuff we didn't know before. Plus I get to train now so let's get started. The voice in his head then sounds out, not so fast kid. Did you already forget? I am going to fix your body. Hi Ubi. Oh yeah, I forgot you would be able to do that now. When are you going to fix my body again? First off, don't talk aloud, simply think what you want to say and I will hear it. Talking to yourself all the time will make you seem crazy. Second, I should warn you this is going to hurt. Thirdly, we start now. Watching this whole exchange Jiraiya was confused, but then he remembered how Naruto allowed Kaiubi a mental connection in his head. So he decided to simply let it all play out. All of a sudden though, a massive killer intent not felt in 13 years washes over the clearing. Naruto suddenly hunches over as red chakra surrounds his body. In a voice slightly altered by the demonic chakra he reassures Jiraiya who is looking worried. Don't worry Irosenin. The fox is just starting to fix my body. I'll be fin. Naruto's statement was cut off when the already rising killer intent exploded and a pillar of red chakra was sent into the sky and Naruto starting to scream in agony. Being knocked back by shockwave of the power releasing, Jiraiya can't help but be worried. Iwubi wasn't kidding when he said this would be noticed miles around. Jiraiya at this point is trying to make his way towards Naruto, but is having difficulties. Ah. I can hardly get close to him. This wind is so strong, and it burns. Pushing Chakra into his limbs to push through the now gale force wind, Jiraiya is now standing in front of Naruto, looking through the dense Chakra. Inside he sees something that tears at his heart. Jiraiya can't see Naruto floating slightly with his body rigid, arms and legs spread outward, face contorted in a silent scream of agony. Meanwhile back in the village. Panic. Complete and utter panic ran rampant with the citizens of Konoha when the evil killer intent was felt and the pillar of red chakra rose in the distance for all to see. Civilians ran through the streets like a swarm of bees. Cries could be heard in the meantime. The demon is escaping. It's going to kill us all. We are going to die. In the Hokage's office we can see the entire room packed with terrified ninjas and the civilian and elder councils all panicking and demanding the death of Naruto. Hokage-sama what is happening? The brats releasing the Kaiubi. It's finally going to take revenge on us. The screeching voice of Haruno Sakiri, one of the prominent members of the civilian council, sounded above the din. I told you we should have killed the brat Hokage-sama, and now look what happened. The demon has finally taken over and is going to kill us. While the ninja and civilian council were panicking, the elders had fallen silent because they noticed that the Hokage seemed fairly relaxed in all of this. Raising his hand and slamming it on the desk Siratobi roared, silence. In the now silent room Danzo spoke, Hiruzen, what is the cause of such a massive release of Kaiubi's power? And why are you not worried about it? Do you know what is going on? All eyes turn to the Hokage as he speaks clearly and lies to their face, though they don't know the last part. There is no cause for panic. I sent Jiraiya to oversee Naruto's training with the fox's chakra. I told him to allow Naruto to go past his barrier and access as much as he could. Naruto came to me asking for help in controlling it because he could only go so far without losing himself to his bloodlust. 
so I offered Jiraiya and his skills in Fuenjutsu. I told him he would be able to practice without worry of repercussion, and in the event of a loss of control, Jiraiya would be able to suppress the beast. Standing up and turning to look out the window towards the pillar of power that is now starting to fade, the Sandane continues, look. The power is starting to fade. Jiraiya has everything under control. Now leave and return to your duties after you calm the civilians running around in the streets in a panic. I warn you now, there will be no action taken against Naruto because of this, and if I catch so much as a whiff of trouble, everyone here and those responsible for whatever is done will be sent down to the torture and interrogation department to talk to Ibiki about following my orders. Grumbling about the demon brat and how they can't give it what it deserves the room starts to clear. However, it is only Danzo who catches the small smirk on his old teammate's face as he looks back to where the pillar was. Narrowing his eyes he wonders, what are you planning here Izan? I know you were lying to us. What is really going on here? Back in the clearing ten minutes earlier. Gureya was feeling fairly sick watching the whole process. Looking through the red chakra he can see Naruto's clothes burning from the heat and disintegrating. Unfortunately, without the bulky jumpsuit Jiraiya has a clear picture of all that is happening to his godson's malnourished body. Even over the maelstrom of noise he can still see and hear the cracking as bulges forming all over Naruto's body as bones are continually broken, restructured and reformed. A sickening squelching sound is heard muscle is forming and becoming tighter and more defined with new skin and hair growing. Even contorted in pain, he can see Naruto's facial features were changing. His face was losing some of its childish roundness and becoming more angular, his eyes were becoming slanted like a fox, his whiskers were becoming darker, and his canines were turning into fangs. In short, Naruto was growing at a rapid pace before Jiraiya's eyes. As sickening as it was, Jiraiya had to admire Naruto's tolerance for pain, lasting five minutes before passing out from the pain. After the initial scream of agony, he stopped shouting and simply grit his teeth and went with it. The only indication that Naruto was in pain was the expression on his face. Overall the process took 10 minutes, but for Jiraiya it seemed like an eternity. Every breaking bone, every sickening squelch, every gasp of pain brought a wince to Jiraiya's face. His heart was breaking seeing his godson in such pain. But finally it was all over. Due to Naruto's now lack of clothing, Jiraiya went over to the bag full of training gear he brought from Naruto's apartment, he brought out the training suit. Dressing his godson still steaming and much heavier body, he rests him gently on the ground and looks over his new changes. Gone was Naruto's previously malnourished body, in its place was the body of a young man. He was no longer short for his age, changing from 4'9 to 5'3. His ribs and bones were no longer showing from malnourishment, instead he was covered in lean tight muscle, not enough to be muscle bound and impede his movements, but still strong and built for speed. His hair was a longer, the back now going down to the middle of his shoulders, the sides going to just below his jaw, framing his face, his spiky bangs falling freely on his forehead, the top was not as sticking up in the air anymore, but laid somewhat flat. His face looked older as well, losing some of its childish features. Great Kami. He looks like a young version of Minato. Looks like the fox kept its word. After gawking for a minute he finally got over Naruto's changes and his thoughts turned more perverted. Ha. This kid is going to be fighting off the ladies with a stick with that feral look of his. He's going to be a gold mine for my research. Giggle giggle I can see it now itcha itcha animal instincts. This kid is going to go far. It was while Jiraiya was lost in his perverted inner monologue that Naruto woke up. Noticing his new sensei's perverted look, he immediately shouted out in a slightly deeper voice, Iro Senen. What perverted thoughts are you? Trailing off slightly Naruto now seems to notice his changes, gah. What happened to my voice? It's all deep now. Why do I feel different? Did the fox do this? Gureya snapping back to reality after Naruto's shout watches as Naruto was starting to freak out slightly in amusement. Having an idea he shouts, ha. You think it's only your voice that's changed. Look in the river at your reflection and see how you look now. Immediately rushing over to the river and looking at his reflection, Naruto starts pacing out while taking in his new features. Slightly worried at Naruto's silence Jiraiya asks, hey Gaki. Are you okay? Silence. I hope he's okay with the changes. Maybe he is upset at the fox. Or maybe he's scared at what the villagers will think and do to him if they see the changes. Interrupting Jiraiya's worried reflection, Naruto suddenly grins brightly and shouts out, yada. I look so cool. Aw oh man, this is awesome. I look totally badass. Naruto then starts bouncing around and doing some weird victory dance. Having a minor heart attack at Naruto's shout, he immediately stomps over and grabs Naruto by the collar of his suit and whacks Naruto upside the head while shouting, damn it Gaki. You had me worried there. Don't freak me out like that. Giving sheepish grin and rubbing the back of his head he says, he. Sorry, Hirosenin. I just got real excited for a minute. 
Taking a closer look at his body, Naruto now seems to notice his change in clothes. Hey what happened to my orange jumpsuit? How did I get in this thing? That would be my fault Naruto. You see, when you were changing your clothes got burned off so I put that training suit on you, so you would not catch a cold laying naked on the ground. Oh okay. As long as you didn't do anything perverted to me it's all good. Aiming a tick mark on his head, he hits Naruto again shouting, I'm not a pedophile gaki. That's my snake of a former teammate. Besides I would rather be dead than touch a guy that way. I'm a super pervert. I like girls. Ow. You didn't have to hit me. I was only joking. Sheesh. Well it was a bad one so don't do it again. If you two are quite done we have work to do. Naruto grabs his head slightly in pain due to the fox's frustration. You okay Gaki? Yeah, it's just the fox telling us to get to work. Growing serious, Jiraiya agrees. He's right. We have much to do and only a month to get it done. So let's get started. Is there anything we need to do before we get started? No, I'm ready to get. Drilling off with a blank look once again before coming back, wait. The fox says he and I have to get the contract taken care of. Having forgotten that little fact, Jiraiya remarks, oh, I had forgotten about that. Well it's probably a good thing anyway, I've got to run some errands to get some things for your training. So while you're doing that, I'll go take care of that and be back later. Nodding Naruto says, okay I'll see you when you get back. Jiraiya then makes a hand sign and vanishes in a swirl of leaves. Watching Jiraiya leave Naruto now asks the fox what to do. Come to your mindscape, I will explain what we need to do there. Okay fox. But how do I get there? Naruto hears a sigh inside his head before, just sit and meditate, I'll do the rest. Doing as asked, Naruto sits cross-legged on the ground and closes his eyes. With Jiraiya. Appearing in a swirl of leaves outside of the Hokage Tower, knowing he should probably talk to his sensei about what happened, Jiraiya then proceeds to hop up to the window of the Hokage office. Arriving through the window he remarks, hey sensei. I've got an update for you. Looking up from the current sheet of paperwork he was working on, the Sandame Hokage greets his student with a serious look and asks, this would not happen to be about the immense spike in the fox's power that sent the village into a near panic is it? Sitting across from Saratobi, in an equally serious tone Jiraiya responds, yes it is. I wanted to tell you all that has happened since we left. Nodding, go on. Well it all started when I removed the Gaju Fuin from Naruto. Back with Naruto. Appearing in the ceiling chamber in front of the gates, Naruto then stares up at the fox and greets him, hey Kaiubi. Time to get you out of that cage for a bit right? Nodding, the fox responds, yes kid. I am eager to breath the outside world again. I see you're enjoying the changes I made to your body as well. However, before we get started I ask that you change this place to be a little less dull. Sitting in a cage in a sewer can get real boring after a while. But the confused face, Naruto asks, how can I do that? Grumbling at his container's stupidity the fox responds, we are in your mindscape kit. Anything you can think of can be done here. The only limits here are the limits of your imagination. Oh, okay. Then let's see. Closing his eyes with a concentrated look on his face, Naruto imagines the forest outside of Konoha. Sure enough the mindscape starts to waver and morph. The stone floor became a grassy plain, the pipes became giant trees, and the ceiling became a blue sky with a few clouds for shade. Opening his eyes, Naruto starts tearing in awe, and his face lights up before noticing the bars of the cage are still there. Looking determined and closing his eyes again Naruto starts concentrating on the bars with Kaiubi looking on in confusion. Upon seeing the bars of his cage changing, the fox now understanding what Naruto was attempting, looked on in eagerness. Pretty soon the bars changed to form a large tree with the kanji for seal engraved in its bark. Breathing hard from the effort, Naruto then looks up to the Kaiubi and asks with a small smile, how's that? The Kaiubi then starts glowing. Watching in some fascination, Naruto watches as the Kaiubi shrinks in size until he is the size of a small horse. Kaiubi then relaxes and lays down on the ground and stretches out in a patch of grass. Letting out a sigh in satisfaction he says, much better. Thank you. Wondering how the Kaiubi changed size, Naruto says, you're welcome. But how did you change size? Why did you not do that before? Giving Naruto a foxy grin at remarks, and miss seeing the fear and awe on your face when you met me the first time. I don't think so. All foxes like playing pranks, I might be a biju, but I'm still a fox, and so I like pranks as well. Grin growing, and when I'm free I'm going to show you how to really prank those villagers of yours. You and I are going to have a lot of fun. Nodding eagerly, that sounds like fun, but I'm not known as the prankster king of Kanoha for no reason. You might be surprised at what I can think of. I almost pity the villagers for what we are going to do to them. Both chuckling at the mental images of the villagers being pranked to hell, it's Kaiubi who decides to start. Let's get this done then. 
the sooner I'm out, the sooner we can start your training. Growing serious, Naruto sits on the ground and starts listening as the fox explains. Now. As you know we are going to make a summoning contract for me that will allow my freedom from the seal. It's a fairly simple process so it should be done by the time the pervert gets back. Now first thing we need is a blank summoning scroll. Um, how are we going to get that? There is not much in here to use. Reaching out with one of his tails, Kaiubi then whacks Naruto on the head, sending him sprawling face down into the grass. Dumping back up and pointing at the fox he shouts angrily, hey. What did you do that for? It was a serious question. Face palming the Kaiubi responds, you baka. What did I just say about your mindscape and what you could do in it? You said I could change it, and the only limits are my OHH. I see what you mean now. Here. The blank summoning scroll then appears in between them, and Kaiubi decides to continue explaining. As I was saying, now you need to play some blood on the scroll. Take a kunai and slice your hand and squeeze the blood over the scroll. Naruto does as instructed. Now I'm sending you a mental image of the hand signs you need to weave. Do you have them? Naruto nods. Good. Well I run my chakra into the scroll, channel your own chakra, run through those hand signs and slam your hand down into the blood, releasing all the chakra you built up into the scroll. Okay, but I was wondering what the last hand sign was. I've never seen it before. It's the hand sign for demon. Only those with a demon's chakra flowing in them can use it to any effect. Satisfied, Naruto follows the instructions. After releasing his chakra into the scroll, it started glowing with a mixture of red and blue, and the blood started spreading across the scroll in intricate patterns Naruto had never seen before. Eventually the glow died down and Kaiubi says, contract complete. As soon as the fox spoke, Naruto's arms started burning and smoking. Closing his eyes Naruto grit his teeth so as not to cry out. Feeling the pain dissipate, he looks down at his arm that now holds a tattoo on his arm, with nine tails curled into a spiral, similar to the swirl symbol on the back of his jumpsuit, and an image of Kaiubi's head in the center. Forstalling Naruto's question, Kaiubi says, that is a summoning tattoo. It is what symbolizes our contract allowing you to summon me. Great. What do I do now Kaiubi? I sense the pervert is not returned, so leave the mindscape and wait for him. When he returns tell him the contract was mad and then summon me. Okay, how do I summon you? Bite your thumb and swipe some blood across the seal, channel some of my chakra, and then slam your hand onto the ground, shouting Onikuchius no jutsu, demon summoning jutsu. Alright. See you in a few minutes. Naruto fades out of his mindscape and back into the clearing. Gireya back in the Hokage office. And that is when I left him to get the contract done. Gireya blew out a breath and sat back in his chair. The Hokage was speechless. The story sounded so crazy, yet he had a feeling it was all true. Gireya and Naruto met Kaiubi. Kaiubi was under a Jinjutsu when it attacked the village. Kaiubi wants to help Naruto. Kaiubi aged Naruto's body four years in ten minutes. Naruto can summon the Kaiubi. It was all too much and Saratobi's brain shut down. Gireya was getting a little worried when the silence stretched on. Maybe I broke him. It is kind of a lot to take in. Waving his hand in front of Saratobi's face, Jiraiya asked, Eh, Saratobi sensei Are you in there? Sensei. Eventually the Hokage's brain rebooted and he asked to confirm once again, you're not joking are you Jiraiya? That is all completely true. Completely sensei. Sighing, the Hokage responded, I was afraid of that. You're absolutely certain there is no danger to the village. You don't think the Kaiubi was lying. I was worried at first, but it seems sincere. I don't think there is any danger. Very well then Jiraiya. Just be careful. Sure thing sensei. I better get going. I have to get some supplies before I go back to the clearing. Jiraiya then leaves out the window and towards the marketplace, thinking about all the things he needs to do. I have to get him a new outfit, that orange jumpsuit has to go. He's going to need some weights for tojutsu practice. Going to have to go to the Higurashi ninja shop for that. I should probably get him some books on sealing and basic fuinjutsu supplies while I'm there. Sealing is in his blood being in Yuzumaki, and when he finds out about his mother, I bet he will be even more interested. Finally, I need to teach him some basic ninjutsu. Won't be too hard. I can take care of that. Plus the training and those abilities Kaiubi was talking about. This is going to be a long month. Arriving at the Higurashi ninja shop, he walks in and the door rings, signaling his entrance. Looking over at the counter he sees a young girl in a Chinese-style shirt and hair up in two buns, polishing a katana. Looking up when he enters the girl grows wide-eyed at his presence. Jumping up and bowing the girl says, Jiraiya Sama. It's an honor to have you in our store. My name is Higurashi Tenten. Is there anything I can help you find? Bowing slightly in return Jiraiya remarks, actually Tenten said I was wondering if Kashiro was in. Oh you mean dad? Yeah he's in the back working the forge. 
I'll go get him. Deciding to start looking around while waiting, Jiraiya eventually hears a booming voice behind him. Ah Jiraiya-sama it's been years since you last been here. It's great to see you again. Turning around he sees a bear of a man. Higurashi Kashiro, a former ninja who retired due to injury in the Third Shinobi War, is very tall and muscular, with a barrel chest and massive arms, covered in scars and burn marks that only comes from blacksmithing, a weathered face and long black hair with streaks of grey, bound by a leather strap showing his age. Smelling of smoke and clothes covered in soot. Though imposing, the man has a mile-wide smile on his face as he greets his old friend. An equally large grin on his own face, Jiraiya shakes the man's large hand says, it's been too long Kashiro. And how many times have I told you to drop the Sama? I told you, just because I'm a Sanin doesn't mean you have to address me like that. We go way back to my Genin days. Laughing loudly Kashiro responds, only every time I see a Jiraiya. But I'm sure you didn't come here to reminisce about old times. Now what can I do for you? Growing serious, Jiraiya looks Kashiro in the eyes and says, it regards his legacy. Knowing immediately who Jiraiya was talking about Kashiro turns to his daughter who is listening to the conversation, Ten-chan, would you please go deliver the batch of training weapons to the academy, while Jiraiya and I borrow the shop for a bit. Confused, but resigned she responds, okay dad. I'll be back in an hour. Leaving and switching the sign to closed on her way out, Kashiro then asks, so it's time already huh? Yes. Things are happening that are making me move up my plans for Naruto. I have to train him and get him strong enough to survive what is about to happen. I've met young Naruto several times already, he always seemed like such a nice boy. But I know some of the things that have happened to him and quite frankly it disgusts me. I'm happy to help Jiraiya. I owe Minato a debt that I could never repay. The least I can do is help his son. I know. I just found out the whole story from Naruto and Siratobi sensei Let's just say things in the village are going to be very exciting come the finals. I'm sure. Now what is it you need? I'm needing a new outfit made for Naruto. Five sets of them will work, and I've already got what I want written down. That orange jumpsuit makes Naruto a walking target and he needs to blend in more. Handing Kashiro the paper with the specifications, he looks it over and nods. I can have this done in a few weeks. What else? Nodding, yes about five will do. Also, Naruto and I are going to leave after the finals, so I need the long-term training package. Training clothes, with slots to put weights in. Don't worry about them being chakra weights, I can draw the seals myself. A full set of kunai and shuriken. Some basic fuinjutsu scrolls and supplies. Also a practice sword for kinjutsu. I'm going to give Naruto his mother's inheritance, and I'm sure he is going to need it. Finally I need some sealing scrolls to store everything. As Jiraiya was listing the items, Kashiro was grabbing them off the shelves and piling them on the counter. Pulling out his wallet to pay for the items, Kashiro waves it away. It's on the house Jiraiya. I've gained plenty of business from Naruto over the years, and this is the least I can do to help repay my debt. Bowing to the man, Jiraiya said, thank you my friend. There is one more thing though. I need a batch of Minato's special order to be made and picked up before we leave. I will pay double for your speed and discretion. Eyes widening, Kashiro whispers, so you are going to teach him that. Very well. I'll have it done and ready by the time you have to leave. Be careful. Bowing once again, Jiraiya heads towards the door with a large scroll full of supplies. Before he leaves he says, you too Kashiro. I won't forget this. Thank you. And then he was gone in a swirl of leaves after the door closes. With Naruto back at the clearing. Who's oh? What is taking that pervert so long? I swear if he is peeking again I'm going to beat the crap out of him. Cease your senseless ranting, he is here. A swirl of leaves announced Jiraiya's arrival with a large scroll tucked under his arm. Waving, hey Naruto. I'm back. Sorry it took so long, I was talking with Saratobi sensei and got held up. How did things go with the fox? Accepting Jiraiya's excuse and calming down Naruto responds, it's done. I was just waiting for you to get back before I summoned him. What is in the scroll by the way? Waving it off, it's just some supplies for your training. Go ahead and summon Kaiubi. I want to see how this works. Only channel a medium-sized amount of my chakra kit. You don't want to summon me full size and cause a panic. Okay fox. Good idea. Walking over to a large open space, Naruto bites his thumb and swipes some blood across the tattoo on his arm, he starts channeling a moderate amount of the fox's chakra, and feeling a pull in his stomach, he slams his hand on the ground and shouts, Oni Kuchiyas no Jutsu. A large puff of smoke erupts in the clearing, and a deep booming voice is heard, Ah! It is good to be free of that blasted seal. The smoke cleared revealing a ten-foot-tall Kaiubi. Turning to the gaping duo, Kaiubi says, Time to begin. Humming out of their stupor, Jiraiya turns to Naruto and says, he is right. We have a lot to do. Now let's go sit down and I'll tell you what is going to happen. 
The trio sits down in the shade of some trees, and Jiraiya begins speaking. First things first. Naruto, while we are teaching you, you will address us with respect and call us Jiraiya-sensei and Kaiubi-sensei. Second, you will do as ordered and not complain. The training will be brutal, but it is necessary. Gazing at Naruto in seriousness, he receives a nod in understanding. Good, now first I am going to tell you the key to our training is in you cage bunshin. As you may or may not know, the cage bunshin no jutsu has the ability to transfer any and all information gained by the clones to the original. I know you can make hundreds of clones at once, and that is what we are going to do every day. Surprised at this information and more than a little excited at the possibilities this offers, Naruto nods eagerly. Every day you will start by making 300 clones. You will divide them into equal groups of 10 and have them work on different tasks. I will create 10 shadow clones to work with these groups. The original you will work with Kaiubi and myself. Group 1 will practice chakra control. This group will practice tree and water walking, as well as kunai balancing. Groups 2 and 3 will work on the ninjutsu I will teach you. Groups 4, 5 and 6 will work with Kaiubi in training your special abilities. Is that enough Kaiubi? It will work enough to get the basics down. But I want to train him in the kitsune to jutsu style as well. Alright. In that case, I will let group 7 and 8 work on that with you. Are you able to make clones? To help with the groups? Yes, I can split my power by the number of tails. In my case, 9. Okay that works out well. Now, group 9 will be reading Fuinjutsu theory and group 10, practicing your kinjutsu skills. The Yuzumaki clan was renowned for their sealing and kinjutsu skills, and it's time you started learning. Now you, yourself will be spending time meditating to sort through the clone's memories and practicing what they learned with either myself or Kaiubi. This will go on for three of the four weeks we have to train. The final week will be for review and rest, and a surprise I will reveal to you as an award if you work hard and make sufficient progress. Do you have any questions? Nodding, Naruto says, yeah I do. What do you mean about the Yuzumaki clan? I did not know there was one. Incredibly surprised Jiraiya asks, you mean you don't know? The Yuzumaki clan's history is important in the founding of Konoha. Did you not learn about that in the academy? Shaking his head, no I didn't. They did not mention anything about it. Who were they? They sound important. Speaking up, the Kaiubi says, I know much about your clan kit, seeing as all my previous hosts have been Yuzumaki. Desperate for knowledge of his origin Naruto pleadingly asks, would you please tell me about the Kaiubi sensei? Nodding, Kaiubi begins his explanation. Many years ago the Yuzumaki are the royal family of Yuzushiagakur, village hidden by whirling tides, a village on an island located in the land of whirlpools. The Yuzumaki are distant blood relatives of the Senju clan, and as such, were on good terms with each other. So when the Senju and Ichiha clans decided to begin negotiations after much battle and death, the Yuzumaki were called in as peacekeepers. When negotiations were over and Konoha was formed an alliance was formally created between Yuzu and Konoha, by way of political marriage. Yuzumaki Mito was given to Senju Hashirama, the Shadame Hokage. On a side note, Mito was my first host. Unfortunately a tragedy befell the clan. The Yuzumaki were famous for their longevity and knowledge of seals, also to a lesser extent, their kinjutsu skills. This caused them to gain many enemies. They were a small village, but their power rivaled that of the Great Five. Most of the other major villages feared that. So an alliance consisting of Iwa, Kumo, and Kiri was formed. They banded together and launched an assault on Yuzu, destroying the village and killing all but a few. They sent for help from Konoha, was sent reinforcements led by Yuzumaki Kishina, heir to the throne of Yuzu, who was in Konoha a few days before the massacre. Unfortunately they arrived too late. After slaughtering the enemy still there, they discovered all who survived were scattered to the wind. I don't know much more than that. Yureya interjects with, this is what triggered the start of the second shinobi war. The Yuzumaki clan symbol, the swirl that is on the back of much of the clothing that the ninja wear in Konoha, was worn proudly in that war in honor of their sacrifice. Naruto by now has tears running down his face upon hearing the tragedy that befell his clan. He shakily asks, is there anything left? Yureya nods and then says, yes Naruto, there are some ruins left. You were actually near the air. the island was closed off to all travel due to the whirlpool surrounding it that only an Yuzumaki knew how to deactivate. Naruto is silent as he stares at the swirl on his headband. Kaiubi and Jiraiya both give him a minute to come to terms with what he has heard. Eventually, his tears stopped and his eyes started burning in determination. He then swears in the most serious voice he can muster, I will forever remember their sacrifice. In their honor I will learn all I can of their arts and become the next Yuzumaki seal master. I will eventually return to my ancestors' homeland and rebuild it to its former glory. I swear this on my nindo, my ninja way. Nodding in satisfaction, Jiraiya then asks, is there anything else before we start? Naruto shakes his head no. 
The trio then stands up and Jureus says, then let's get started. Create the clones and we will begin. Naruto shouts, yosh. And moves to the middle of the clearing. Channeling his chakra and moving his fingers into a familiar cross sign, he roars out, cage bunch and no jutsu. The past three weeks have been some of the toughest of Naruto's life, and he was looking forward to finally be able to rest. Every day has been the same. He would wake up and summon Kaiubi. Then he would make 300 bunshins and have them group off learning various things under the watchful eyes of Kaiubi and Jiraiya, as well as their own bunshins, while he went and did physical training using the weights Jiraiya gave him. Then every five hours, Naruto would meditate and slowly disperse the groups of bunshins and assimilate their knowledge. He would then create more bunshins and start the process over again while he went and practiced what they learned and continue this until it was time to sleep. I had all paid off though. Naruto was the strongest he'd ever been in his life. Under Kaiubi's tutelage he learned how to utilize his enhanced senses. He can also create and control fox fire. He was only at an intermediate level. He had no problem creating and channeling it like he would normal fire, but the jutsu he used were low in number. He could also manipulate it to cover parts of his body for use in his tajutsu. He also started delving into kitsune illusions. But they were complicated and he did not get very far, only at a beginner's level, being able to do basic illusions such as kitsune no sakaku. Kijeno Kuroku, Kitsune Illusion. Cloak of Shadows, and Kitsune no Sakaku. Niseno Kiksyaki, Kitsune Illusion. False Insanity. The Kitsune style to Jutsu was a different story. He took to it like a fish to water. It just felt natural to him and he became very proficient, borderline advanced at the style. When combined with his foxfire abilities, it made a deadly combination. The Kitsune to Jutsu is a very acrobatic style that utilizes speed, unpredictability, feints, misdirection and counter-attacks, often integrating parts of the environment to its advantage. Moving in all directions near the opponent, whether it be above, behind, to the sides, or head-on. The user moves in using high speeds to bypass an opponent's guard and strike quickly with a quick punch or kick combo, and then move away before the opponent can counter-attack. Movements simply flow with each other with no pattern or method, making it hard to predict, yet still very deadly. Learning the style was made even harder due to the chakra weights given by Jiraiya. Thanks to the Kaiubi's healing however, his body quickly adapted to the weights. So Jiraiya then placed resistance seals on him. These seals work by altering the air around the bear, increasing its resistance to movement, making it feel more like moving through water or mud. Naruto's seal was currently only on level 2 out of 10, due to only having them for a few days. Training with Jiraiya was just as difficult. But his ninjutsu arsenal was now greatly expanded to include some jutsu of his nature affinities, wind and fire, with the fire being kitsune bai. Those include. Katen. Enden, fire release. Flame bullet, Katen. Hasenka no jutsu, fire release. Phoenix age fire, futen. Datapa, wind release. Great breakthrough, futen. Atsugai, wind release. Pressure damage. He also learned some jutsu to expand on his existing talent with cage bunshins. Those include. Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone, Kunai Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Kunai Shadow Clone, and Naruto's favorite, Bunshin Daibakuha, Clone Great Explosion. He also learned the Shunshin no Jutsu, Body Flicker, at Jureya's insistence. His chakra control also increased greatly, mastering tree and water walking to the point where he could fight on any surface for over an hour without losing his concentration. He had also started Kunai balancing and was able to hold a Kunai suspended above his hand for about 5 minutes. Naruto's skill and sealing progressing quickly. Fuenjutsu just seemed to click with Naruto. He read through several books on Fuenjutsu theory and improved his calligraphy to a level Jiraiya was satisfied with. He can write seals at decent speeds for a variety of functions. He is versed in some Fuenjutsu techniques like Yansu no Kuna no Fuxakusu no Shiheki, Four Corner Fox Barrier. He can also make many types of seals, ranging from storage scrolls to explosion tags and chakra suppressors. His Kenjutsu was also nothing to scoff at. While he is no master swordsman, he was able to adequately wield and use a sword without looking like a complete novice. Using hundreds of bunshins every day for three weeks had improved Naruto's skills from low genin to high chunin or low jonin. We now find Naruto and Jiraiya heading towards a familiar ninja shop. Present time, with Naruto and Jiraiya. With an exasperated look on his face, Naruto asks, Na, Hiro Senen, where are we going? I want to get some ramen. It's been forever since I went to Ichirakus and saw Tuchiyajis and Naam Nichin. Frustrated at the lack of respect, Jiraiya asks, whatever happened to Jiraiya sensei Gaki? I thought I was finally getting some respect from you. But the sly grin, Naruto answers, that's because we aren't training anymore. You said while we were training I was supposed to call you that, but now we aren't it's back to Iro Senen. I do respect you though, so if you like I could call you Iro sensei 
Besides, you're still a pervert so I will call you Iro, because that is what you are. Tsaing Jureus says, whatever Gaki, but to answer your question, in case you haven't noticed, your training outfit is beat to hell, and due to your growth spurt, none of your old outfits will fit. So we are heading to pick up the new outfit I had made for you at the Higurashi Ninja shop. Grinning brightly, oh. We're going to see Kashiro Ajison. That's cool. I haven't seen him since before my last mission. A new outfit would be good I guess. I hope there is some orange in it. I love orange. Shaking his head, Jureus says, I know you love orange, so there is some in it, but nowhere near the degree it was with your horrific jumpsuit. Laughing lightly with a faraway look Naruto says, yeah. I suppose that thing looked terrible didn't it? But it was the only thing I could afford and it helped draw attention to me. I suppose that is why I bought it, so I could have my existence acknowledged. But none of that matters anymore. I no longer care about what the villagers think of me. I'll miss my friends, but I would be glad to leave the village after the Chunin exams. Mood dampened slightly, Jureus says, yeah I can understand. But things are going to change soon. You will show the village what a mistake they made when your burden is revealed to the public. The lies will stop and people will be forced to look at their actions. That reminds me, I still need to have Sensei talk to your friend Sensei about what is going to happen soon. Aiming a slightly devious murk, I still can't believe you and Jiji thought of that. It's so clever. Plus it will make the council look bad by airing their dirty laundry regarding me. That makes it worth it. Plus what you're planning for me is awesome, and there is nothing the council can do about it. What I'd give to be a fly on the wall for that meeting. It's going to be hilarious. Adding Naruto should Jureus says, I planned on you and I crashing that meeting, as the meeting does regard you and to an extent me, they would not be able to raise a fuss about our presence. Although I'll ask Saratobi sensei to cause a distraction, allowing us to show up in the shadows and hide our presence with our transparency jutsu to spy on it for a while first. Then reveal our presence when the time is right. But enough of that, it looks like we are here. Entering the shop causing the bell to ring, Kisaro looked up to see both Naruto and Jureya standing there with Naruto waving and saying, Hi Kisaro Ajison. Did you miss me? Looking confused Kisaro looks at Naruto and is slightly stunned. Minato? No, wait that's not Minato. But that must mean. Pointing at Naruto he asks with voice trembling slightly, Naruto. Is that you? But the foxy grin that bears his fangs, making him look even more feral with his new features. Of course it's me. Who else would call you Ajison to your face? Laughing because that is true, I suppose you're right. You sure changed a lot. Do you mind me asking what happened? Looking towards Jureya and seeing him nod, Naruto decides to tell the truth, Iro Senen seems to trust you so no I don't mind. You know about my tenant right? Tuckling at Naruto's nickname for Jureya and nodding, Naruto continues, well I met him a few weeks ago, after Iro Senen removed this seal that was over the fox's seal, and it pulled me and him into the seal where we talked and made a deal. Turns out my seal was not working right and caused my body to be stuck as a nine-year-old. He fixed it, but it had some side effects as you can see. That is what the explosion of power a few weeks ago was about. Completely surprised at what he was told, Kisaro felt like he wasn't getting the whole picture, but decided not to ask as he didn't need to know. Shaking his head, Kisaro asks, so I assume you are here to pick up your new wardrobe. Nodding eagerly, yeah. Hiro Senen said he got me new clothes because my old ones would not fit anymore. This training suit is all I got. Handing Naruto a brown, wrapped package Kisaro offers, well why not just change into a set here. There are changing areas in the back. Go on while I talk to Jureya here. Bowing Naruto thanks him and goes off to the back of the store to change. Jureya, after making sure Naruto was out of earshot, even with his advanced hearing, then asked with a whisper, is the special order almost ready? Equally quiet, Kisaro replies, yes. It is almost done. By the end of the exams you will be able to stop by and pick them up. Does Naruto know about his parents yet? Shaking his head, Jureya replies, no. I am going to tell him about his parents later today and give him his mother's inheritance. I'll hold on to his father's scroll until we are safely out of Konoha. There is no way we can risk his father's prize jutsu falling into the hands of someone like Danzo. That would be disastrous for all involved. Nodding, Kisaro says, it sounds like a plan. I hope he does not react too badly though. I hope he does Kisaro, now look alive, here he comes. Sure enough, there was Naruto dressed in his new outfit with a foxy grin on his face. Thank you so much Hiro Senen this is awesome. I look totally badass in this. Indeed he did. Naruto's outfit consisted of. A short sleeve black trench coat with dark red and orange flames at the bottom of the coat, the Uzumaki clan symbol on the left sleeve, and the kanji for 9 engraved on a hit I8 plate on the right, his practice sword attached to the fasteners going diagonally down the back, a mesh shirt visible under a long sleeve tan v-neck style shirt. 
wrapped bandages starting at the forearm over the sleeves down to the hand, semi-loose black pants with some bandages around the thighs, and a kunai holster attached to the right leg, held up by a belt, brown in color, with places to hold scrolls on them, a pouch for basic supplies near the back of the hip, and finally shin mesh, to bind the lower area of the pant legs and black ninja sandals. Nodding in approval, Jureus said, you pull of that look well gawky. Especially with that feral look and longer hair of yours. You look like a serious ninja. Looking at Jureya with a grin on his face then turning to Naruto, you almost look like you were born to wear those clothes. Although it helps when this is a near replica of Minato's clothing during his prime, just in darker colors and smaller size. He definitely takes after his father now. Oblivious to the older man's inner thoughts, Naruto simply says thanks Kisaro Ajisen, Iro Senen. Kisaro smiles then frowns slightly, you welcome Naruto, but I can't help but feel something is missing. Ah. I know. Kisaro reaches back to the leather wrap in his hair, unravels it, letting his hair flow free and hands it to Naruto saying, come over here for a minute. Naruto does as asked, and Kisaro turns him around so he can see Naruto's hair from the back. Pulling the hair together in the back, Kisaro proceeds to wrap the dark leather band in Naruto's hair, starting at the base of the neck, down to his shoulders, where he leaves a small amount of hair falling freely at the very end. He then unties Naruto's forehead protector and turning Naruto around, he ties it to his left arm. So the leaf symbol is visible just below the Uzumaki clan symbol. There you go Naruto. Now it's perfect. Naruto then turns to the window to see his reflection and admire the new hairstyle and placement of his forehead protector. Giving a thumbs up, Naruto says, it's perfect. Thanks. Gureya then speaks up, thank you for getting this done Kisaro. We have to go. Gureya was then interrupted by Naruto's stomach, making its displeasure about lack of food apparent, much to Naruto's embarrassment. And get the gaki some food apparently. Yada. To Ichirakus. Grabbing Naruto's shoulder before he can run off, Jiraiya then says, wait Naruto. Let's take the quick way why don't we? Okay Iro Senen. By Kisaro Ajisen. I'll see you later. Both Jiraiya and Naruto bowed before making a hand sign and disappearing in their respective shunshins. Jiraiya in a swirl of leaves and Naruto in a swirling column of blue fire. Outside Ichiraku Raymond. Arriving at the Raymond stand, Naruto immediately ducks under the flaps and shouts in greeting, Hey Tuchi Ajisen, A.M. Nichin. Did you miss me? Naruto is immediately glumped by a brown and white blur. This blur happened to be Ichiraku A.M. A young woman of around 17, with tan skin, long brown hair and dark eyes. She and her father have known Naruto since he was a child and are two of the few who treat Naruto well, with Tuchi acting like a kindly grandfather and A.M. an older sister. Naruto Itaudo. Where have you been? We haven't seen you in over a month and we were getting worried. Turning red due to being smothered in A.M.'s chest, Naruto manages to force out, A.M. Nichin. Can't. Breathe. At this point Jureya, who is currently grinning lecherously and scribbling in his notebook, comments, I don't know Naruto. Seems like a good way to go to me. Giggle giggle. A.M., looking down and seeing where she is currently gripping Naruto at, turns red and after letting go of Naruto, shouts pervert. And hits Jureya with the ladle she is currently holding. Upon hearing A.M. shouting out, Tucci, in a fit of fatherly rage, storms out to castrate whoever is inappropriately touching his daughter, however stops at seeing Jureya and stares confusedly at the sight of a bright red A.M., a laughing Naruto, and Jureya, who is currently on the floor with swirly eyes and a huge lump on his head. Immediately guessing what has happened and realizing he overreacted, Tucci then remarks, you'll never change will you Jureya. Dumping up and dusting himself off like nothing happened, he replies, A, hey, you know me Tucci, I need research for my new book, and the gaki here is a gold mine. At this time, Tucci and AM take a closer look at Naruto, who currently is grinning widely at the sight of the duo, and take in his changes. With varied reactions. Tucci whistles and says, looking good Naruto. I like the new look. Finally hit puberty huh? Wincing slightly at the memory, but pushing it away and smiling at his Ajison, he replies he. I guess you could say the Tucci Ajison. But what's wrong with A.M.? She's acting weird. Said girl was staring at Naruto with a glazed look on her face, flushed cheeks and a bit of blood dribbling down her nose. Upon seeing this Tucci immediately bursts out laughing, snapping A.M. back to reality and wondering what the joke was. Naruto, being oblivious, doesn't understand what is going on, but notices the blood and comments, Hey A.M. Nichin, you got a bit of blood coming out of your nose. Of pink rising in her cheeks at being caught having some indecent thoughts towards her little brother, quickly wipes her nose and changes the subject by asking, so Naruto what'll it be today? As if on cue, Naruto's stomach starts grumbling again causing him to sheepishly rub the back of his head and say, I guess two of the usual am Nichin. I'm pretty hungry. Writing it down on her notepad she then says, alright then. Ten bowls of ramen, with six maizo, two chicken and two beef, coming right up. What do you want Jureya-sama? Air, Jureya-sama. 
are you okay? Ireya, whose eyes bugged out at hearing the order, is currently having flashbacks of a certain female, redeated Yuzumaki. Kami, he eats just as much as his mother. My poor wallet is going to be so empty when I'm done here. Eventually shaking himself out of his stupor he says, just a beef and vegetable ramen is fine with me. Now sitting at the bar next to each other with the two ramen cooks in the back, Naruto asks, hey Irosenin, where are we going after this? I don't really want to go back to my apartment and have to deal with everything being broken again. Nodding and understanding Jiraiya says, you're staying with me at my hotel for the remainder of our time in the village. But before we go, we have to stop and see the Hokage. I'm sure he misses you and we have to get the first phase of our plan out of the way. Nodding in agreement, Naruto then asks, it's really happening isn't it? There's no going back now. Serious now, it is Naruto. There is no other choice. I will not let the village continue on unpunished, and this will strike them all where it hurts. Am then returns with their meals. With a quick eye to Takamasu they dig into their meals. After finishing the men receiving the bill, Jureya cries waterfall tears as he empties his wallet onto the countertop. After which Naruto and Jureya then shunshin it to the Hokage's office. Hokage office, with Saratobi. Saratobi Hiruzen was currently fighting a losing battle against the bane of every cage in existence, paperwork. Massaging his aching hand, he gets up and walks over towards the Yandame's portrait with a scowl on his face. I bet you're just mocking me right now. Seeing me toil over endless piles of paperwork. How did you do it? What was the secret to getting it all finished so easily? His internal grumbling was interrupted when he felt the telltale spike in chakra signaling a shunshin in his office. Turning to face the new arrivals he is surprised to see who is arriving in his office. Appearing in the classic swirl of leaves was Jiraiya, but it was who appeared in a column of blue fire swirling up from the floor that caused the Sandame's heart to stop briefly. Minato. No, it can't be Minato so it must be. Hey old man. Did you miss me? Smiling brightly, Naruto my boy. It's good to see you. You being here must mean that the training was successful. Correct. Come sit down. Saratobi sits at his desk and after activating the privacy seals in his office, he motions for them to begin. Hell yeah it did. Jiraiya sensei and Kaiubi sensei taught me a lot. I learned so much thanks to those bunchins of mine. Smiling, Saratobi asks Jiraiya, and how would you rate young Naruto now? How strong is he really? Taking a contemplative look, Jiraiya then says, as of now he's got the finals in the back. As for his skills. His tojutsu is easily low mid jonin. His ninjutsu is easily jonin, by utilizing his two elemental affinities to full effect, as well as the cage bunch and jutsus, I definitely say jonin. Jinjutsu is nil if he can't use the kitsune illusions. If he can, I'd say he is low mid chuan in there. He has a lot of latent talent in kinjutsu, being an Yuzumaki, so there is a ton of potential there. I'd probably rate it at low jonin, though it will get higher if he gets more practice in. Ceiling, in high jonin in theory, having read several advanced books on fuinjutsu, however, due to the amount of time it took to correct his handwriting. Boy. My handwriting was not that bad. Shudagaki, it was atrocious. But we fixed it. Anyway, if we had more time he could get his practical fuinjutsu up to his theory and, but as of this moment his around low jonin. He's already chunin, heck I would rate him a takubetsu, special, jonin with a specialization in sealing. Kaiubi and I really outdid ourselves here. I never expected that using the bunshins would allow him to get this far. Beaming in pride at the praise he's given Naruto feels the need to point out, don't forget this is all because of your idea to use the cage bunshins to shorten the time and get more stuff done. That was awesome. Nodding in agreement, Suratobi says, young Naruto-kun is right Jureya-kun. I was really clever. I certainly look forward to Naruto's performance in the exams. Sorry about earlier when I first saw you, my eyes were playing tricks on me, and I thought I saw someone else. He, you must be getting old Ajison. Now you're seeing things. Who else would it be? While Naruto was speaking Saratobi sent a questioning look towards Jiraiya, then flicking his eyes towards Naruto and back. He indicates, does he know? Shaking his head, Jiraiya mouths tonight and Saratobi nods. All of this happened in the span of a few seconds, and Naruto was oblivious to the silent exchange. Sighing, the Sande masks, do you want to get the plan started? Yeah, time to fill out the apprenticeship forms and get the stamp of approval. Standing up and moving to the middle of the room the Hokage snaps, Yuzumaki Naruto. Front and center. Jumping up and into said position. Do hereby accept the full-time apprenticeship of Jureya of the Sanin, Toad Sage of Mount Mayaboku. If you do, Jureya-sama will be your legal guardian in all things, you will be granted the rights and privileges a Sanin has, including, but not limited to, Sanin travel rights and limited political immunity. You will only answer to either Jureya-sama or myself. No one else will have the authority to command you. Are you willing to accept this responsibility? 
Bowing at the waist, he says, I do so swear on the will of fire that I accept this honor and will be forever loyal to you and my master. Placing a hand on Naruto's shoulder, the Sandame looks Naruto in the eye and says, I'm very proud of you Naruto-kun. You made a good choice. Motioning everybody to his desk the Sande masks Naruto and Jiraiya to sign their names on the applications for apprenticeship and guardianship. Doing that, Saratobi then gleefully stamps the Hokage seal on the document, making it official. It's done. Is there anything else? Yes sensei, just one thing. Nodding, Saratobi motions on. I would like you to have that talk with Naruto's classmate sensei. Smiling slightly and nodding, it's already been done. It was a rather interesting conversation. Flashback three weeks ago, Hokage's office. In the Hokage's office at the four Jonin senseis of the group the village has dubbed the Rookie 12. On the far left sat Gai Maido, Kanoha's Tejutsu master and sensei for Team 9, on the inner left sat Yuhi Kurinai, the Jinjutsu mistress of Kanoha and sensei to Team 8, staring with disdain at the smoker next to her. That smoker was the son of the Sandame Hokage, Saratobi Asuma, former member of the 12 Ninja Guardians and sensei to Team 10. Finally on the end sat Hada Kakashi, the copy ninja, the last surviving member of Team Minato and Sensei to Team 7. Across the desk sat Suratobi Hirazan, smoking his pipe. I'm sure you are wondering why we have called you away from training your students for the Chunin exam finals, Kakashi winced slightly, but only the Sandame noticed. Some news has come up and I felt it prudent to inform you because it involves those on your team entered in the Chunin exam finals. Gurunai asks, what information is this Hokage-sama and how does it affect our students? Basing seriously at the mall, it seems that Suna has brought a Jinchuriki for the exams, and he is currently in the finals. At this news the four Jonin's eyes widen. You can now see why I felt the need to bring this to your attention, especially you Kakashi, seeing as how one of your students is fighting him. Now everything we own on the Gara and our own Jinchuriki, Naruto from the time they were born until now, are in these folders. I want you to read them and then we'll continue. The Jonin then take the folders and start reading. While smoking his pipe, waiting for them to finish, the Sandame notices multiple expressions cross the Jonin's face. Disgust, fear, hatred, sadness, surprise and more. Finally all are finished and the air is full of sadness. Asuma says, I knew Jinchuriki had it rough, but this is terrible. Assassination attempts, brutal beatings, torture, I never knew. Naruto has had a terrible life, and Gara's was even worse. They are granted so much power, but at a terrible cost. Sigh I need another cigarette. Kurunai can't say anything, she is simply speechless with an aching heart and tears running down her face. I says in a surprisingly quiet voice, such unyouthfulness these children deal with. In our own village too. It seems the villagers' flames of youth went dark a long time ago in regards to young Naruto. The Kashi, I already knew about a majority of these issues, seeing as I was usually the first Anbu on the scene, but seeing it all together on paper, what seemed small and scattered incidents were actually so much more. How could I have been so blind to this? So you all understand now. I am giving you full authority to discuss this with your teams. Everything. Don't leave out a single detail. They must know what they are dealing with, if they ask about Naruto's status as a container, give them hints, but don't say it outright. There are events in motion that center around the Chunin exams. I have it on good word the Naruto's burden will not stay secret much longer. So please spare your students the lies that the civilian council will spread and allow them to form a clear opinion of Naruto. That is all. Dismissed. Sir. Four voices called before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. Flashback end. And that's about it. It's been done so that when your burden is made public knowledge, your friends will defend you. There may even be more people who convert to your side after my announcement of your burden, as I plan to open your medical records to the general public, allowing the village to know all you have been put through at their hands. Naruto's face paled rapidly and he started hyperventilating. Naruto my boy, calm down this must be done. Naruto. Setting his fear under control, he shakily asks, even that one time Hokage-sama. The Sandame looks at Naruto seriously and nods ever so slightly. Standing suddenly, Naruto says, Jiraiya I've got to go. I'll meet you back at the hotel. I need some time to think. He disappears in a swirling column of blue flames. Very worried, Jiraiya then asks, Sensei. What did Naruto mean by that one time? What causes him so much stress? Sighing deeply, the Sandame reached into the bottom drawer and pulled out a bottle of sake and two saucers. Have drink Jiraiya. You're going to need it. Jiraiya drinks, it's that bad. Shaking his head sadly, no I'm afraid it was much worse. The event Naruto was talking about was the time he was raped then beat near to death by several villagers. Dear Kami. I never knew. Why did this have to happen? But the sick feeling in his stomach and hands shaking in rage, he throws the saucer aside and takes a swig from the bottle. What happened? Rape scene start. He was nine at the time. 
They cornered him in an alley and knocked him out. When he came to he was strapped to a coffee table. Naked. He was begging to be set free, saying he had been a good boy, but then she comes in. She starts saying how she is going to make the demon feel good. She won't enjoy it, but she wants power. She thought any demon offspring would be the birth of a new Keke Genkai. After going for a couple hours Naruto was spent, and the woman felt she had received enough of the demon seed for a child. So she then proceeded to make sure nobody else could do what she had done with him again, and stabbed him in the scrotum, severing the nerves and tubing there. From there he was tortured for several hours, until the bitch had enough and tossed him out into a back alley. All the while he was drugged to stay awake. So he could feel everything. Taking a deep breath and swig from the bottle, the sandame continued. It was a few hours before the villagers found him. Still under the effects of the drugs, they proceed to have some fun and left him with half his bones broken and bleeding to death. When the Anbu found him later, he was covered in urine and blood. When he was brought to the hospital the full extent of the damage was revealed. 64 broken bones, a ruptured spleen, collapsed lung, a cracked skull, broken nose, black eyes, lacerations to 70% of his body, and his reproductive system was completely destroyed. Rape scene end. Sighing deeply, it took three weeks full of surgeries, however, if the Kaiubi had not helped him, there was no way he would have survived. It was the only time the doctors and Kaiubi worked in tandem. The doctors set the bones and Kaiubi mended them, they rebuilt his reproductive system, and the Kaiubi healed it and made it functional again, if he was bleeding too much when repairing his internal organs, the Kaiubi lessened the flow, they cleaned and disinfected the wounds and lacerations, and Kaiubi stitched the skin back together. It was a miracle that he survived. After all the wounds were healed and sealed up Naruto was placed in a medically induced coma for three weeks. Why so long sensei? Every day we sent in a Yamanaka to try and identify the woman and other attacks, but the mental defenses were too strong. They could not access it to see it or suppress it to help with Naruto's recover. He will forever be haunted by that night, I could never get him to talk about who he saw. I know for a fact he knows who the woman was. If you should ever get him to identify this woman during your time with him, I beg you, please let me know so I can punish them for it. I promise and say. This is a trying night for him. I still have to tell him about his parents. I plan to tonight, but I should probably wait until tomorrow though. I don't think he could handle it right now. Good night sensei. Jureya vanishes in a swirl of leaves to go search for Naruto. Naruto and Jureya are currently in the Hokage's office discussing the upcoming invasion plot that had been discovered by Naruto. Flashback. Last night after Naruto left. Naruto was currently jumping across rooftops trying to clear his head and come to grips about what the Sandame is going to do. I can't believe Jiji is going to tell them about that. I never wanted anyone to know. The only person I ever told was Haku-chan. Now everyone is going to know. Naruto's musing was interrupted as he detected a spike in chakra to the east of him. What is that? There is nobody training this late. Even if there was, the training grounds are in the opposite direction. Deciding to see what is happening he moves towards the source. Upon arriving, he finds the proctor of the second exam, Jeko Heide, engaged in battle with the Jonin sensei of the Sand siblings. Quickly realizing this is no friendly battle, after seeing the Suna Jonin narrowly be decapitated and retaliate with some sort of wind technique, Naruto decides to intervene. Drawing on small amount of demonic chakra, he flashes through hand signs and mutters, Kitsu no Sakaku. Kijeno Kuroku, Kitsune Illusion. Cloak of Shadows, to hide himself from sight and sneak up on the sand jonin. He comes up silently behind the jonin during his gloating and pulls out a kunai and bashes him in the back of the head with the butt of the knife, knocking him unconscious. The danger passed, he drops the illusion and rushes over to the coughing leaf jonin, who is losing blood fast and on the verge of passing out. Seeing the leaf hit I8 on his left arm he manages to force out before losing consciousness, spy Yakushi Suna Odo allies invasion brief coughing fit during the finals, warn Hokage-sama. That is all he manages to say before losing consciousness. Still alive, however barely, he starts putting pressure on the wounds and flares his chakra to let someone know of his position. Feeling the chakra spike, a squad of Anbu on patrol suddenly appears. The squad takes in the scene while the leader, a female with purple hair and a cat mask, notices the wounded man and shouts, hey, cun. And immediately rushes and shoves Naruto out of the way to apply emergency first aid. Two other Anbu move to secure the Suna Jonin, while another Anbu, a tall man in a bear mask, walks over to Naruto and says, report. What happened here? Naruto starts to explain, but before he can start, Jiraiya arrives. Taking in the scene he asks, Naruto. Are you alright? What happened? I was just getting ready to tell Bear San here that. But I would recommend we go see Hokage-sama about this. It's very important. 
Realizing the seriousness of the situation if Naruto calls his Jiji, Hokage-sama, Jiraiya looks to the bear mask Anbu and nods, and all three disappear in their respective shunshins towards the Hokage's office. Upon arrival, the trio is noticed by the Hokage, and seeing the serious looks on Jiraiya and Naruto's face, as well as the presence of the Anbu, Saratobi immediately moves into Hokage mode and snaps out, report. The duo looks at Naruto, and he steps forward and gives a brief summary of all that happened. Flashback end. Sighing at his desk, the Sandames says, an invasion during the Chunin exam finals with Odo attacking and Suna breaking the alliance with Konoha and helping. So that is what my former student was planning. Nodding, Jiraiya remarks, we always knew that snake team would try to take revenge on you for passing him over for the title of Hokage. The bear Anbu speaks, Hokage-sama, we must make preparations. We have the Suna Jonin currently locked in the Anbu holding cells, and if Jekko-sen's words are interpreted correctly, we have a spy in our midst named Yakushi. Naruto then speaks up, he must have been talking about Kabuto. He was in the exams with us and had all these fancy info cards that had a lot of information on everybody there. He had this creepy aura around him that made me nervous. Growing up like I did, I learned how to read people and let me tell you, when Kabuto looked at me, shudders it was like he wanted to dissect me or something. The Sandame, nodding, says, we have received reports of strange behavior on the part of Kabuto lately. You're probably right there Naruto. Turning to the Anbu, bear. Gather a squad and assemble the clan heads and be discreet about it. We have to make plans on what needs to be done. Bring Danzo as well. He will find this out sooner or later so he might as well be here. Jiraiya frowns at hearing Danzo's name but says nothing seeing merit in the statement. Hi, Hokage-sama. It will be done. The Anbu shunshins away to carry out the Sandame's orders. Turning back to Naruto, thank you for coming forward with this Naruto. Also thank you for saving young Heitsan. If it wasn't for you, we might never have known this until it was too late. Now we can properly prepare for this. Now the clan heads are arriving soon, normally you would not be present, but seeing as you are Jiraiya's apprentice and this information was brought forward by you, I will allow you to stay, but I ask you to be silent and less spoken to and show respect to the clan heads and Danzo. This changes our plans for you slightly. I did not plan to reveal you until later, especially to Danzo, but we have no choice now. I have to warn you, be wary of Danzo. I don't know what he might try against you. Aun, hi Hokage Jiji. Naruto then moves to the side of the office as the clan heads begin arriving. Eventually the office was filled with the sleepy clan heads. Akimichi Chauza, Yamanaka Inoichi, Nara Shikaku, Aburam Shibi, Hai Ugahiyashi, Inyazuka Tsum and Shimura Danzo, all with a puzzled look on their face upon seeing Naruto and Jiraiya there, especially with Naruto's new look and features, but put it aside seeing the serious expressions on their faces. The Hokage then activates the privacy seals in his office. Stepping forward, Danzo is the first to speak. Hiruzen, why have you called us here in the middle of the night? Also, why are Jiraiya and Yuzumaki here? That will be revealed shortly Danzo. First off I want everyone here to know everything you hear during this meeting is classified information dealing with the survival of the village. This has the effect of snapping all assembled out of their sleep-induced stupor. Seeing them all paying attention, the Hokage decides to begin. Approximately 45 minutes ago, Naruto-kun left my office after a short discussion between him, Jiraiya and myself, regarding the results of his training. While traveling through the village, he feels a chakra spike and deciding to investigate, comes upon a battle between Jekko Heid and the Suna Jonin, Baki. After interfering and consequently saving Heid-sen's life, he found out about an invasion by Suna and Odo, led by Rachimaru, that is going to occur during the finals of the Chunin exams. Everyone's eyes widen at this news, and Hiashi asks, I can see why you called us Hokage-sama, but why not assemble the full council to inform them? Acknowledging the question, Heiate sends information ousted a spy, one Yukushi Kaputo. I am certain that he is gaining information through the civilian council, I am just not sure how yet. That is why I ask you all use discretion when leaving for here tonight. Shikaku speaks, troublesome. So I assume we are here to come up with a plan of action. Yes, this meeting is a war council, as we will soon. An Anbu then shunshins into the office and freezes upon seeing it fully occupied, but shakes it off and says, Hokage-sama. Urgent information and a missive intercepted for Baki from Suna regarding a betrayal and invasion of the village. Report. Hi. As you know we are holding Baki in the Anbu headquarters and intercepting any and all messages between Suna and their village's representatives here. Apparently the Kazakiage has been killed by Rachimaru. A Genin team discovered the Kazakiage's corpse along with his bodyguards. Their faces were missing and it was discovered they were killed by a potent snake venom. Everyone is blown away at this. The Sandame says, this changes everything. Thank you Sparrow, you are dismissed. Do not tell anyone else about this. 
There are spies in the village and we don't know how deep they are buried. Hi, Hokage-sama. The Anbu shunshins away. Hiraya speaks, so Suna was tricked into attacking us by Orochimaru. We can use this to our advantage and have Suna on our side without Orochimaru finding out, and when he starts the invasion. He will get a nasty surprise. Tsum speaks, so what are we going to do about the snake trader? The sand aim, I know my old student very well. He probably has two goals for this invasion. Kill me and cause as much damage to the village as possible. It's time I finished what I started, so I will fight Orochimaru. Anzo, no offense Hiruzen, but you are not in your prime anymore. If you fight Orochimaru, he may very well win. What do you suggest I do? There is no way I can send somebody in my place. Except for Jiraiya, nobody would be strong enough. Even if we tried to substitute myself with him, the cage box has chakra disruptors that detect and dispel any Henjur Jinjutsu. So it would be impossible to disguise him. I may be able to help with this kit. Step forward and summon me. They are all going to find out sooner or later. Stepping forward, Naruto addresses everyone, that may not be true. I may have a solution, or rather, my tenant does. All eyes turn to Naruto, wondering what he means. Turning to the Hokage, he asks to speak with everyone. They were going to find out sooner or later. Eyes narrowing in suspicion, Danzo says, what is the boy talking about Hiruzen? How could the Kaiubi speak to us? Sighing deeply, the Hokage decides to explain. I'm sure you all have noticed Naruto's new features. There is a reason behind them. Some of you may know that Orochimaru encountered Team 7 in the Forest of Death, in the process he placed a Gajo Fuin on Naruto. When Jiraiya removed it several weeks ago, he and Naruto were pulled into the seal and met the fox. They worked out a deal and this is part of it. I'm sure Kaiubi can explain the rest. Do not overreact. Everyone is completely safe. Turning to Naruto he says, go ahead. Walking forward, Naruto asks, some room please. Everyone rather nervously steps back. Unraveling the bandages on his left arm, revealing the fox tattoo there, Naruto channels a small amount of demonic chakra, making everybody even more nervous, swipes some blood across the seal, and shouts out after slamming his hand on the ground, Onikuchi is no jutsu. A small cloud of smoke appears, and after it clears, Kaiubi, the size of a large dog, with nine tails waving behind it, appears. Before anyone can panic, he raises one paw and says, do not fear. I mean no harm to you at the moment. I simply wish to speak to you all. Anzo, with narrowed eyes, asks, how are you out of the seal and what do you mean you wish us no harm? You attacked the village before, what is stopping you from doing it again? I deserve your suspicions human, what you don't know is that I was under a jinjutsu when I attacked. I was ripped out of my previous container and had my will subjugated by a Manjekyo Sharingan. Anoichi, shouts, impossible. The only one who could do that was Ichiha Madara, and he died over a hundred years ago. You're wrong human. That blasted Madara is still alive. A shell of his former self, but still alive. He bears the final level of the Sharingan, the Eternal Manjekyo, which grants the bearer a form of my immortality. I know this because I am the one who created it. Eyes widening at this information, Chaoza speaks, you gave the Sharingan to the Ichiha clan. Nodding, yes. Did you think that any force beyond my creation would be able to subjugate me? But we are getting off topic, I did not intentionally attack this village. End of story. The Sandame nods, Kaiubi is correct. Naruto said that you had a suggestion. Yes, I do. You said that you would not be able to disguise the perverted hermit due to seals that disrupt chakra. I can override that and cast a kitsune illusion on him. Shibi pushes his sunglasses further up his nose and stoically says, I'm assuming this illusion utilizes a different method. Seeing as how the seals disrupt human chakra. Logic dictates that the assumption of your own demonic chakra not being affected. The one who smells of insects is correct. I have been teaching the kit here kitsune illusions. The one I'm speaking of is similar to your henge, however it is solid and virtually impenetrable. I can cast this onto the perverted hermit and he will be able to take the old monkey's place while he sees to the defense of his village. Shikaku sighs and says, troublesome. But it would work. If Kaiubi's word is to be believed, we would be able to successfully switch Sandame sama with Yurea sama with no one being the wiser. Zoom, still skeptical, growls out, why should we trust the Kaiubi with this? For all we know, it could be lying. Growling lightly, I know about your clan in Yuzuka. You understand the concept of honor unlike most humans. Unlike you all, I am not human, I am a demon, and a demon has honor. So if I say something is true, it is true. Hesitant, but understanding, the Inuzuka head says, I suppose you're right. Tsuritobi, addressing the fox says, so it is decided. We will use Kaiubi's plan. Thank you for your help. I will ask Naruto to summon you when we need you. Nodding the Kaiubi vanishes in a red haze.
Anzo, still curious, says, well this has been an enlightening experience, I still fail to see why you requested my presence here as an. Addressing the rest of the crowd, Suratobi says, this meeting has served its purpose for now. If I keep you any longer, your families may notice you are missing. All except Anzo and Jureya are dismissed. I want our Jonin commander, Shikaku, to draw up defense plans and have it on my desk by tomorrow. All the clan heads say, hi, Hokage-sama. And disappear in a shunshun. Gureya says, Naruto. Meet me back at the hotel. There is something I need to talk to you about after I am done here. Okay, Jureya sensei And he disappears in a swirling column of blue fire. Turning to Danzo with a hard face, now that we are alone I'm going to speak plainly here Danzo. I want your root anbu. Eyes narrowing, Danzo replies, you know Yandame sama ordered it disbanded. I know nothing of root anymore. I said speak plainly Danzo. I know you did not disband your root organization after the Yande martyred it. Do not try to deny it, I've known for years. Eyes widening slightly, but nodding, very well. I see there is no point in denying it. But why now? I allowed it because I know, despite your questionable and sometimes despicable methods, you have the best interests of the village at heart. I knew you could take care of things from the shadows while I was the public figure. You would take the jobs that no one else would and leave no trace. I do not like your methods, so I turned a blind eye as long as you never decided to work against the village. I know a lot of your secrets Danzo. He looks pointedly at his bandaged arm and eye. Slightly nervous and paling slightly, Danzo says nothing but his expression shows his surprise. Yes, I admit I was horrified when I discovered the information. Collaborating with Arachimaru to desecrate the grave of our sensei, Hashirama, for his DNA, steal Ichiha Shisui's eye, and the eyes of other Ichiha the night of the massacre, I was sorely tempted to end your life, then and there. To have gone so far to fight against death and obtain the power of the Biju was disgusting to me. However, no matter how much my own morals screamed at me, I take the job of Hokage very seriously. I know sometimes the decisions have to be made that will be for the good of the village. So, I again, turned a blind eye because I knew, as sickening as it was, we still needed you to operate from the shadows. Anzo simply asks, how did you find out? Ureya steps forward with a dark look on his face and says, he found out from me when I found documentation of the procedure at one of Arachimaru's bases. So you are blackmailing me. Frowning, the Sandame says, I was not planning on this Danzo. But my hand has been forced. I'm sure you can understand. Some of the things you have done could be considered treason. But at the moment you are a necessary evil. Nodding, Danzo says, there is nothing I would not do for the good of the village. I'm glad you still recognize that despite your peace-loving ways. Our methods may be different, but we do have a common goal. The continued protection and prosperity of Kanoha. What is it you need me to do? Like I was saying, I need your root Anbu. There is much corruption in this village. Especially on the council. They are blinded by greed and power. I have no doubt they would sell out this village and anyone in it just to fill their pockets with money. For now, there is not much I can do. I have plans in motion though that will slowly turn the balance of power back in favor of the Hokage position. Using their power, they have committed numerous crimes and covered it all up. All while weakening the village as a whole. It honestly would not surprise me if some on the council were helping Orochimaru in this invasion. Nodding in agreement, Danzo says, I am aware of this. They have several people in government positions in their pocket, ready to do their bidding. However, there is much happening you may not know. I've been compiling proof of their crimes for quite some time to use as blackmail. Perhaps it's time to use it. I want to try my plan first. But if it does not work, I will use your proof. I want to change the village as a whole and remove its corruption. Not simply replace one corrupt leader with another. Your plan might cause that. What is your plan exactly? I cannot tell you that. I may need you, but I don't necessarily trust you not to try and subvert my movements. I will tell you it involves Jureya and Naruto and certain secrets that will soon be made public. Very well. However that surely is not all you need my root for. What else is there? You are correct, I am sure the council has taken advantage of the amount of paperwork I've had to do over the years to slip a few decrees through that benefits them in some way. I want at least six of your root to go over every decree or law made since Minato died and I resumed my title as Hokage. I want to find out how much has slipped through the cracks. Ureya speaks, that is a wise idea sensei. There is no telling how much they have tried to take advantage of you over the years. Nodding, Danzo says, indeed. You have gone soft in your old age Hiruzen. It would not surprise me. What do you want me to do about the invasion? I want you to covertly reinforce the village's defenses. I want at least two root in every department regarding the village's security to look report any leaks to you and fix them. I also want several root and my trusted Anbu to search out any and all spies in the village. I want them all found. 
either get them to turn on their employers and work for us or quietly eliminate them. I want no evidence found linking their disappearance to the village. Finally, before the fighting starts, I want you to quickly and quietly kill as much of the sound ninja in and around the village as you can. The less forces Orochimaru has to work with, the better. Very well Hiruzen, it will be done. Is there anything else you require? Shaking his head, no my old friend. That is all. You are dismissed. Bowing slightly, very well. I will begin my tasks immediately. Walking out the door, he stops and gives some parting words, and Hiruzen. It is good to see your will of fire still burns. With those words, Danzo leaves. After the door is shut Jiraiya sighs. I don't like the sensei. You are giving Danzo too much power. It may turn around and backfire on you. I don't plan to let him think he can do whatever he wants. I will have him watched. But I don't think he will betray me now. We may not like each other very much, but we both care for the village more than anything. Shaking his head slightly, just be careful sensei. Danzo will not always be on your side. I'm going to go back to Naruto. I've been meaning to tell him about his parents for a while now. It's time he knew. But that Jureya vanished in a swirl of leaves. But Naruto. Naruto was reading a scroll on ceiling while waiting for Jureya to show up, but he was having trouble concentrating. What troubles you kid? I can feel your inner turmoil. I'm worried about Jiji. Do you think this plan of yours will work? Will we be able to survive this invasion? Don't worry kid. The monkey may be old, but he is still Hokage. He will ensure the village will survive this. Yeah, you're right. I wonder what it is that Iro Senen wanted to talk to me about. It sounded pretty important. Looks like you're about to find out. He is here. Hey Iro Senen. Did the meeting go okay? Sitting down in front of Naruto, Jiraiya sighed and said, as well as it could go. I really hate politics sometimes though. Nodding in understanding, but still curious, so what is it you wanted to talk to me about? It sounded important. It is Naruto. I just ask that you keep a clear head with what you are about to find out. Everything that was done, was done to protect you. Growing serious, what are you talking about? Staring Naruto in the eyes he says, it's time you knew about your parents. Naruto's heart skipped a beat, he then shakily asks, MIP parents. You can knew them. Nodding, yes I did Naruto. I promised them when you grew old enough and strong enough I would give you their legacy. WH who were they? Your mother's name was Yuzumaki Kishina. Your father was Namakiz Minato. The Yandame Hokage. Eyes wide and skin paled, Naruto asks in a near whisper, I'm the son of the Yandame. The one who sealed the fox inside me was my own father. Nodding, Jiraiya unsealed two large scrolls from seal on his wrist and sets them down in front of Naruto. The one wrapped in a red ribbon is from your mother, the one wrapped in a yellow ribbon is from your father. With shaking hands, Naruto grabs the scroll from his mother first. Recognizing the blood seal, he bites his thumb and drops some blood on the seal. Nervously, he opens the scroll and begins to read. My dear Sachi, son. My name is Yuzumaki Kishina, Kanohas Kai Chishio no Habanero, Red Hot Blooded Habanero, Second Jinchuriki of the Kai Ubi no Kitsune, Last Princess of Whirlpool, and most importantly, your mother. There is so much I want to tell you, but I don't have much time left. My strength is fading from having the Kai Ubi forcefully removed. I'm so sorry I will not be able to be a part of your life. I know of Minato kun's plan to make you the next Kai Ubi Jinchuriki. I want to say I'm so sorry you have to bear such a burden. I know how life as a Jinchuriki can be. I know you will be strong Naruto. You are a hero to everyone in the village, even if they refuse to believe it. At the bottom of this letter are two things I want you to have. The first is the Yuzumaki Book of Seals. This book contains all of the collective knowledge of Yuzumaki Fuenjutsu that has been passed down through the royal family, with each generation adding something to it. I leave this to you too with the hopes you will eventually grow and end up adding your own parts to the book. Use it well. The second is the Yuzumaki family sword, the Yuzushio no Tamashii, Soul of the Whirling Tides. This is a very special sword. It is semi-sentient that bonds with the wielder. Only someone of Yuzumaki blood that the sword chooses will be able to wield it. The bond with the sword, you must kneel on the ground while gripping the sword by the hilt and holding it with the tip facing the ground, place your forehead against the hilt and enter a meditative state. The sword will then see if you are worthy by reading your inner being. If successful, the sword's shape will change to reflect its wielder's soul. Bear it well and make the Yuzumaki ancestors proud. It seems I'm out of time. Remember, I loved you more than anything in the world. You were the light of my life and a symbol of all that was good in the world. I love you so very much Sachi. I'll be watching over you from above. Also, keep an eye on your godparents, keep Tsunade from drinking too much, and give Jureya a good kick in the balls for peeping. Your mother Yuzumaki Kashina. Setting the letter down he then picks up his father's scroll, opening it he reads. Naruto. 
if you are reading this you have proved yourself strong enough to bear the burden of my legacy. My name is Namikaz Minato, Kanohas Kairoi Senko, Yellow Flash, the Yandame Hokage and a very proud father to you. I write this even as I'm holding you in my arms preparing to use you as a sacrifice. I want to say I'm so incredibly sorry for what I have to do. But, as Hokage, there is no way I could ask someone else to give up their child while I spare my own. I know sealing the Kai Ubi and you will make your life miserable, but I know you are strong. I know you will be able to use the Kai Ubi's power for the good of the world. I have faith in you. It pains me terribly to have to leave you, but I want you to know you are a hero. I know your mother left you some gifts, so what kind of father would I be if I did not do the same? At the bottom of this scroll are the two jutsu that made me famous. The Rasengan and Horatio no jutsu, flying thunder god technique. Learn them and use them to protect all who are precious to you. It's time for me to go. Before I do however, I have to warn you. Beware the masked man with the Sharingan eye. He is a very dangerous man. He is the one who ripped the Kaiubi out of Kashina-chan. He has sinister plans and I fear for the world should he succeed. Live well and always know I'll be watching over you. I love you so very much. Your father Namek is Minato. Crying unabashedly now, Naruto chokes out in a voice thick with sadness, but at the same time, great joy, they really loved me. I wasn't abandoned. I had a family and parents who wanted me. Turning to Jiraiya who is watching Naruto carefully, so I guess I get to call you Jiraiya Otisan now, eh, godfather. Reaching over to grip Naruto in a hug he starts soothing him. I guess so, godson. I also plan on finding Tsunade after this business with the invasion is over. We'll be a family. I promise. Now let's get some sleep. If I know you, you're probably itching to test out the stuff your parents left you. He, I suppose you're right Jiraiya Otisan. Good night.